of Top Shelfers Podcast. Tonight we are sponsored by Monarch Social. Are you looking to take the next step and get your own website? Look no further than Monarch Social. Affordable, cutting edge, and designed with user experience in mind. Monarch Social will not only get your website started for you, they can also host it and set and get you set up with a starter SEO package. Head over to monarchsocialbrand.com for more information. Also sponsored by Dark Prime Collectibles. This Sunday marks the first day Dark Prime Collectibles starts streaming here on Twitch.tv. They'll be heading down the road of Dungeons & Dragons, and I will be a part. I am a guest star. I'm super excited. First time playing D&D, so it should be a lot of fun. Check out uh, social media for links dropping for the stream um, for the stream soon, and come watch some D&D. And don't forget to head over to DarkPrimeCollectibles.com or, excuse me, or check out their location at 354 State Street, Clearfield, Utah. That's area code 84015. Last but not least, Happiest. It's the number one place to go for premium CBD that won't break the bank. It is locally owned and sourced here in Utah, and it is safe work, meaning no THC. They have something for everyone. Head over to happiestmed.com. That is H-E-P-I-U-S-M-E-D.com. Thank you, guys. Haley, how are you? I'm good. Three sponsors. That's dope. Yeah, finally making a little progress. Yeah. and. Uh, you know, reading ads is kind of a weird thing because yeah. it's like surreal. It's like, oh, I know, I'd be so excited. It's just like it's that different level of, uh, like, oh my god, it's real, yeah, it's real shit now. Yeah, yeah. it's fun. I, and I'm getting my first, like, I'm getting a real, real website. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, that's fun. And that's gonna be cool. I decided to go sneak peek, but uh, like a vaporwave theme. I really like that, like, oh, yeah, 90s, yeah, yeah, yeah. 80s aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's going on in your life? How's TikTok treating you? Uh, you know, just, I mean, it's fine. Yeah? <laughs> I don't really get views on anything unless I'm dressed like Guy Fieri, which I don't really ever dress like Guy Fieri, so. Right, you have to break it out every once in a while. Yeah, and I just, I'm kind of overdressing like Guy Fieri, so I just don't do it anymore. Yeah, because, I mean, it's one of those things, right, where you, like, if you do it too much, people are going to be like, oh, okay, but when you throw it in just every once in a while, yeah, it just like really hits that mark. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't done it for a while. Maybe maybe, maybe soon. Uh, yeah. I don't know. And last time you were on, you had pink hair, and now you have black hair. I do. Yeah. What made you decide to switch um, it up? Just kind of... I just went for like my emo junior high dreams, you know? Yeah, really... Like the whole time my friend was dyeing my hair... I made a playlist called Raw RxD. Oh, yes. We listened to, like, My Chemical Romance and then Panic at the Disco. And... Bringing back the earlier days of, like, mm -hmm. Tumblr. Oh. Oh, maybe even, like, not even Tumblr. That would have been... Yeah, MySpace. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> it was a good time. MySpace is where it was at. Also, I, I actually did it because I needed to have, like, a neutral hair color so I could, like, interview jobs. But I just want to pretend it's because of my email. <laughs> so that's what we're going to pretend it was for. Do you think we're ever going to get to a point where, like, businesses really stop caring? There is some. Like, like the old dental clinic I used to work for, I had bright colored hair and they, they didn't care. But majority of them, they do care, which is stupid. Because I, I, I really think, like, with tattoos is how popular they are, mm -hmm. piercings, you know, hair coloring, being able to express yourself. Like, yeah. why is that still frowned upon in business settings? Because, like, to be completely honest with you, at least from my point of view... If I walked into a room and someone was just being 100% authentic themselves, yeah. I'd rather work with them than someone who, you know. Yeah, if I walk into a business, I see someone like that, they seem more approachable yeah. to me. You'd say them. Yeah. I don't know. Corporate worlds are weird. It's a whole they different. They are weird. It's a whole different ballpark. It is. But we got together because we got a lot of paranormal to talk about. Mm -hmm. And I'm super, I'm super pumped up because you had sent me a message Gosh, what was it, last week? Or maybe the start of this week, right? Well, it happened last Monday. Okay, so last week. Yeah. And you pretty much had the most prolific paranormal experience, it sounds like. Yeah. And I, I don't ever get, like, like, super scared with that stuff. Right. But it was so real to me that I thought there was, a, like, someone had broken into my house. And I was, like, shaking and, like, it was... Yeah. So walk us through it. Like, what, what all okay. happened? Okay, okay. So I moved back in with my mom and my stepdad. And they were, we were just talking about, like, ghost stuff. And I was telling her how, like, ghost shit always happens to me when 
all the time because I'm like more in tune with it. I don't know. But they were telling me about how Ed's oldest daughter, that's my stepdad, his oldest daughter, when she was young, she said, there's a guy in a top hat in the basement. Like, run upstairs and just crying. And I was like, wow, cool, cool. cool great, cool, 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 great I'm, fun. I'm moving into the basement, right? Fun. And so I was like, that's scary. And then they're like, yeah. And then my son, when he was like young too, he came up and said, I saw a guy in a top, in a top hat. And he had never even told him about and so I was like, oh, cool, cool, cool. And I just, like, I had a feeling now that we talked about it. I was like, oh, whatever. Okay. And so they went out of town. So they left on that Friday and they, um, no. It, it happened on, I don't even remember. It happened last weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but last, last Sunday. Okay. And so they were out of town because so they have, property in Arizona and they go down every weekend so I was by myself and so I was down in the basement and I just like felt like somebody was watching me and so I like turned around and joking I'm like top hat guy I'm just gonna need you to quit it okay and then I just laughed because I think I'm fucking hilarious right <laughs> and so I go upstairs and then I come down the stairs and as soon as I get to the bottom step I look and in my doorway Guy in a top hat, clear as day, could see everything on his face. It's probably like 6'5", big, tall guy, old timey clothes. We made eye contact for three seconds, three whole seconds. Not just like see him for a tiny second and blink and he's gone. I sat and like we just stared at each other. What the fuck? And so I literally am like, what? Yep. And so I <laughs> turn around and I run back upstairs. And I go into a bedroom up there because I think someone broke in. Right. Because I've, like, I've seen stuff, but nothing like that. Like a no. full body detailed apparition like that. So I thought for sure someone broke in. And so I lock myself in the room and I'm just listening and I start hearing footsteps in the kitchen by me. Like loud, big yeah. footsteps. And so I was like freaking. I'm like, I can't breathe. And then um, the bathroom right next to where I was, the door slammed shut really hard like yeah. i was convinced there was someone and so i called my stepbrother over i'm like can you just like come check and see because i'm like i was just so convinced and he came and every door was locked he checked everything there was nothing there wow yep so that's that's got to be probably like the most i've ever heard from like any story because like you know like you said typically you'll have like Oh, you'll blink and like see something, but it's not super detailed or, you know, yeah. maybe it's a figure. Like you can make out the figure, but you can't see. No, he was wearing a suit and the top hat. Like we made eye contact and like he was looking at me. Like, what did you was... see in his eyes? Anything? Nothing. Holy shit. So like, I don't even, usually I can tell if it's like a good thing or a bad thing, but I don't even know. And also I like... I don't get that scared, but, like, I'm scared. Because he was standing in my doorway. Like, the room I'm sleeping in. Right. So. Uh, Forrest, greatest fit ever. Thanks, man. Yeah, I've been doing... I decided to go down the tropical route lately. I really like these monster plants. And I got, like, a gold chain. Thanks for the shout-out. I got though. one, too. Yeah. Yeah. Gold chain to the shit. Yeah. Are you in Flavor Town? I don't know what that means. What do you... What? What kind of flavor? Like, spicy flavor? I don't like flavor. Yeah. I'm white. <laughs> you don't like flavor like, you know, mayonnaise. Spicy. Too spicy. Too spicy. Okay, on a real note, Little Caesars pizza sauce. That shit's kind of spicy. Low key. Is it? For me. <laughs> I can't eat anything above Little Wild Wings. Nothing. Really? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's sad. kind of a bummer. Spicy is stuff. sad. I, I, okay, so like, for a long time, I was very, not anti-spice, but I was like on the same page where I was like, man, mild's pretty fucking hot. I, but then I dabbled a little more, and it's made it a like, little bit easier. Torture, like if you gave me a hot Cheeto, I wouldn't eat it for like twenty bucks. Oh no, shit! No, it's a sad life I have. Okay, how? Let's play dollar game. Okay, mm -hmm. ghost pepper wing. It's like one of the hottest wings at Buffalo Wild mm. Wings. Thousand dollars. Cold hard cash, no Depen tax. De depends if I was okay. If I wasn't employed, like right now, I'd probably do it. Okay. 
if I if I was in a job, if I knew I had job and steady income coming, hell no. Okay. Hell no. Steady income, Kaylee. Five grand. Just one wing. And you gotta like, you know, you gotta let it sit for a little bit. You can't just immediately like melt. Like, kind of sit and stew for a minute. How long do I have to stew? Um, let's say you eat the wing and then you can get to milk within five minutes. Mm. Five G's, five just nice little stack. I don't know. Mm. I love this game because it really puts people like on the. <laughs> Where's the money? Value? Like I love money, <laughs> but I know I'd get so sick. I also have ulcers in my stomach, so I just yeah, can't. Yeah, that's definitely you know what? hurts. Too. No, I would do it for five thousand dollars. Not anything less though. Not a dollar less than that. I think that's Genuinely. that's a good price. For one, if it was just for one wing, yeah, and yeah, yeah, I could do that, I guess. One of my worst, um, spicy experiences was I got bamboozled into trying like some like radioactive level shit. Mm, no, I just don't, I just don't see the point, right? Like, because I can enjoy like a good spice, like, like I said, like I'm in the mildest area, um, but like. There's some shit that just tastes so vile. Well, yeah, it gets to the point where it's not even about the taste. It's just like how, how, how hot you can get it. Like, how much I don't do see I why that's fun. <laughs> I don't understand why that's fun. Like, I watched that Hot Ones show. Yeah. And, like, I wouldn't be able to do the first one. Like, this does not sound fun <laughs> um, I, I, Bieber in chat, she has the one that everyone says is the worst. The the bomb, I think it's oh, called. Oh, the bomb is supposed to taste like acid. Like yeah. I would never do it. One of these days, I'll make a video of me trying it, but it's got to be, it's got to really be, <laughs> I got to get some value out of it. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's TikTok clout or like a funny video or something, but I'm not doing it just to do it. That doesn't sound fun at all. I'll put you on my TikTok if you do it. <sighs> Deal. Okay. Deal. Okay. I'm about that. Okay. Oh, it's gonna suck so bad though. Yeah. Oh. Great content. <laughs> it's all that matters. <laughs> For the content. <laughs> Who cares who gets hurt? Oh, uh, I'm gonna be just dying for the next day. Yeah. So okay, go back. Sorry, we got distracted with hot hot stuff. <laughs> um, do you? <laughs> so with this experience now happening. Yeah. Did it? change your views on anything because i know when we first talked you and i were on similar pages for most things mm -hmm. in regards to like you know we believe that there's something out there we may not know exactly what it is or maybe we can't measure it yet or whatever it is having something that prolific happen did it really change how you looked at i stuff? feel like it 100 percent validated everything for me yeah because it was just too crazy not to like I ruled out everything it could have been. Like, I, like it just was, the, it was nuts. Well, from what you're saying, there's nothing, there's nothing that I could even fathom that would cause something like that. Yeah. Un unless your stepdad, like, pranks hard. And, no, like, he doesn't. Which doesn't. Which, he's a boring man. That would, that, <laughs> that would. That I would, love the guy, but he's boring. That would, like, have to be, like, camera set up and, like, projector set ups to get something no, that crazy. No, you could feel it. Like, I had, like, my arm, like, my arm hair was, like, it was, yeah. It was spooky. But then I told my mom about it. And, like, I was telling her. Because I used to tell her, like, stuff would happen in our old house and she never really believed me. And I was sitting down and I told her that stuff and I was like telling her I've always had stuff happen to me and she's like, you know, grandma has the same thing, right, too. And so I found out that my grandma, like, has ghost stuff happen to her all the time and she, like, knows things, like. Really? Like, apparently she, like, hugged her sister and she knew that there was a baby inside of her that wasn't alive. And she didn't even know she was pregnant and then she had, like, a miscarriage, like, a couple days later. Like, oh, my God. I'm like, what? I'm a witch and you didn't even tell me? <laughs> yeah, fuck. Shit's been passed <gasps> down. So, I still just yeah. wonder what it is because you do. There are individuals on this planet who have. I guess you can call it like an entombment, maybe. I feel like with my situation, it's more of like I'm like a intense empath almost. Yeah. Because like I pick up on people's energies, like, and it affects me too. Like if someone's sat in a room, like, 
I'm my mood is instantly like down, you know. So I think that's part of it is I could just like pick up on people's energies, no matter dead or alive, I guess. But so, what did you think of this top hat? That's what energy? scared me because I felt nothing. Oh shit. I mean, I felt scared. I mean, I think if I wasn't so scared, maybe I would have, like, but it just was, like, shocking. Like, I, like, I just, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't even the fact that, like, there was energy there. Yeah. You were just so, like. And if it is bad, I don't think it's, like, that bad, because I think I would have known if it was, like, evil, mm-hmm. but. Well, and considering that, you know, it doesn't sound like anyone's been harmed. No. You know. Yeah. You said that you woke up with, like, some scratches, right? I woke up with a few scratches. It wasn't anything. It was, like, on my chest. There's three scratches course it's three yeah of course but it wasn't like bad or anything but i mean that could be it could be anything i don't know but it was spooky still because i mean it with your stepbrother and did you say stepsister mm-hmm. all have had experiences and obviously your mom and stepdad live there so like it doesn't sound like anyone's gotten like physically physically hurt oh no, no so no. like They've just seen things so like i mean it can't be if it's if it's demonic or if it is more on the evil side of things, hopefully it's hasn't been waiting for someone who can notice it more. Hopefully it's more just a yeah, neutral. Yeah, I don't think it's demonic. And like my other stepbrother would have friends over and they would walk up the stairs and they would see another shadow like walking behind them up the stairs and there was like no one there. It's so like other people see things too, but nothing like nothing like I did. Right, um, and that's. Uh, Dirty Forest in chat says, I'm still so conflicted. What what do you think ghosts are? Like people with incomplete lives or what? In, in my personal opinion, I think that ghosts, I mean, it's tough hearing something like this because like I trust your opinion on it because like you're just someone who wants to find more evidence. God bless. And having, hearing that type of experience is crazy because for me, I always looked at paranormal as like, Maybe it's just something that we don't have the technology to measure yet. Maybe it's an energy that gets released when we die. Not like a consciousness or a spirit, but we we know where we're at now that we produce energy. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just how bodies work. It can be measured. So maybe there's certain situations where maybe more people can produce more energy and maybe it can, you know, for lack of better words, stain some like a spot yeah, permanently or you know linger in an area until it dissipates fully but i think that like if traumatic things have happened there or even really happy things like just somewhere that has collected a lot of energy or even places that people bring energy like do ouija boards or you know shit like that you're inviting stuff in Mm -hmm. so i think like i do believe it's energies and you know they're always like it's because they have a mission here and you know it's sent to the light but i don't i don't believe i think it's just like as alive as dead like i think they're just people and they're just i i don't i don't it's confusing because like i don't know if they go back and forth or what if they just come visit and say what's up or like right i don't know but i believe it's just an energy thing honestly like yeah if i if i were to put on anything i i I would agree with you like it's just some sort of you know because the thing that always has bothered me and kind of contradicted me and this gets brought up a lot is like why is it always like an old ghost you know why is yeah. it like yeah. where's the like i can't remember someone came in chat when we were talking about paranormal last and they were like where's the 20 year old hipster who died recently who's yeah. was vaping jewels and stuff and like you know a I, saw like was, you hear a saw yeah. or something like that i was that. literally like, talking to my friend about that last night i was like why don't you hear someone like a ghost going like what's up dude like i don't know yeah i don't know and that's always been my thing is like, why is it always like old? Like, why is it the old white ghost or the old or the 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 kid who's dressed in all 1800s yeah. clothes? Like, why isn't it? Why would it stop? Why would ghosts also, stop in time? Periods? But I also believe like the more they're around, the more energy they have almost type of a thing. And they're able to project themselves more mm. and pick up on other people's energy, you know? Right. I could be totally wrong. But, and then, especially with, like, really haunted places and people hear this and then they specifically are asking that right. spirit to, like, come forth and, that, you know. That's another thing to take into account, right, is, like, if there is stories and we have documentation of names or, like, 
like for example like one of the places here in utah is an old burnt down mill mm -hmm. and then it got like turned into a haunted attraction and then it got closed down and now it's just haunted from the original burnings but we have names and documents of people who got killed there during like a fire mm -hmm. so i imagine if you're bringing those names up like maybe it could trigger something right that was like when i go investigating at fear factory mm -hmm. it used to be an old cement factory and right. tons of people died and like they have news articles and have like caught voices like saying their names and the matches with newspaper articles and it's kind of crazy but yeah, it's I don't know. I mean, that that's one of those things, like, because, I mean, that's newer, right? Mm -hmm. The cement factory caught on fire in, what, the 50s? Maybe? Was it later than that? I, I can't remember. I don't know much about Fear Factory's lore. Because mm, it, it was a cement factory, and then it was abandoned for a while, and just a bunch of homeless people lived there and died there. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think homeless people lived there in, like, the 70s and 80s. 70s and 80s. Yeah. I, I mean, I've never had the opportunity to go and investigate there like on the actual paranormal side it's amazing i have done their haunted attraction they do and that's pretty fun it, it's my favorite place to go investigating yeah yeah what okay well tell me more about that then have you found I got pushed down there okay everything there is not evil except one okay and i like i literally got shoved to the ground in front of all my friends like they thought like because they keep all the decorations up during the summer and so we, of course, it's in the body bag room. So we go, we go in the room, and the body bags, one of them is just swinging like this, just one. Like there's no wind or anything. Right. And it's nothing above. They're just tied to the ceiling. All of them are still. And so I like go to hold it, and I feel something like pushing back, and then, and I like fell back, and I was like, really? hey, we gotta go. <laughs> but other than that, like, I've had really cool experiences of like really nice ghosts. And like just crazy like we have like we had four flashlights sitting room and they all turned on at the same time and like wow. yeah you know the, yeah it's crazy you should go when you just hear stuff like that like i don't know because paranormal investigation always has controversy surrounded around it because mm -hmm. there's a lot of non-believers which is totally just everyone has opinions and they're all valid um but when you hear stuff like that they're, they're, that's a little bit more than coincidence okay if like one flashlight turned on it's like okay well all right well what is it all yeah. four turning on all four separate flashlights they're not connected like there's just some things you legit cannot explain yeah what's your uh, what's your honest opinion on stuff like the talk boxes where people can talk through static or use like a i don't want to say a program but like a a piece of equipment that already has built-in words that apparently can be altered by energy. That one I'm not, like, a big fan of. But, like, the spirit box where they, like, flip through the radio channels, like, really, really fast. Yeah. I find that one interesting because if you hear, any like, a voice for more than half a second, it's not the radio because it's flipping so fast through the right. channels. So that one I think is really cool and, and valid. But the other one, I mean, that could... It's programmed. That's... It's just programmed. I mean, it could be like, but I don't. I don't believe it's that one as much as the other one. Yeah, that, that's kind of where I was going yeah. with is because the static one's interesting. Because if you're just flipping through static radio stations, mm -hmm. I think the only thing that could potentially happen is pick up interference from calls. But if it's if if something is said that is relevant to the conversations that are happening. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to deny. We it. went in Fear Factory with like it was me and a couple friends that are girls, and then a guy that took us in there. And we were in there's a, there was a little girl that likes to hang out in this part of the haunted house apparently. Um, and so we we're like trying to talk to her, and like we wouldn't get we weren't getting anything. And then we were like joking. It was like is it because there's a boy here? And then on the ghost box said I don't like boys. Oh. And so he left. And then that's when all four of the flashlights turned on. And then we started getting answers from the spirit box like that. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't know. It. It's just so, it's always been fascinating to it me just because like, you know, we, not to get morbid, but like, you know, we, there's people who want to say they know what happens when we die, but no one really knows. No one really knows um 
and things like this, I think for a lot of individuals, including myself, is almost like a, I don't want to say like a something to look forward to, but like something a little bit more. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because like I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty blunt when it comes to what I think happens, and it's not a lot of people really don't like the answer, which is just I don't think anything happens. Yeah. When you die, but with paranormal, it leaves in my head just a little gap of like, what if? What if? Yeah. You know, and for yeah. me, I think a lot of paranormal investigation and why I'm so fascinated on it is, you know, I've seen things that through videos and with my own eyes and stories like that just don't add up in a way that like they, it can't be proved as something logical. I know every time I see a TikTok that's like freaks me out and like genuinely think is good evidence I send it to you every yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> like you gotta see this. Well I remember like because I was always fascinated at a young age mm -hmm. like family members would talk about paranormal things. Mm -hmm. Not my direct family but extended family and then all of my friend group like through junior high and high school were fascinated with it and it's just always been one of those things where it's like what if like what mm -hmm. if there is something that's just there that we just can't see like, it's, it's just so fascinating to like just to like focus on something you you'll like really never know yeah you know i mean it's interesting i mean with your new experience though I, I i'm pretty like, confident yeah <laughs> yeah what has it altered your thought process though on like maybe there is something that like having something like that because that's not just a someone talking well, through a talk box that we don't know or like flashlights clicking on and off like you saw a human spirit yeah just from stories i've heard from like trusted family members and stuff i always have known that there's something because i've heard so i think we talked about this last time like of like people on their deathbeds talking to their relatives that have passed on yeah. and stuff like that and that always kind of validated me. And I feel like when my dad passed away, I could like I had experiences too that were just too like crazy not to validate stuff for me. Right. And so like I do believe stuff happens, but like and I was like I believed ghosts were real and like but I think it just blew my mind how powerful they could get. Mm -hmm. Like I I just was crazy. Like I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, that's. I told you about my mom seeing someone kneeling next to the bed, right? Um, no, Forrest, tell the story. Um, yeah, I just. I agree with you in the senses. Like, I told you about my grandpa yeah. and, you know, similar thing where, like, the last few minutes of him, well, I guess the last couple hours of him alive, mm -hmm. he was talking fluent sentences to somebody. Not anyone in the room, and for the record, he hadn't been speaking fluently for yeah. the better half of a decade due to strokes and heart attacks. And it just uh, like makes no sense. Like it, there's like, like my stepdad, his, so his wife had passed away. Her sister, just a couple years ago, was passed away from cancer, and she was like unconscious, hadn't talked for like four days. And they were just sitting around her bed, like, getting ready to say goodbye. And mm. she just, like, smiled and giggled. And she's like, hi, Mom. And her mom had passed away a long time ago, you know? I'm like, like, you can't, for me, that, like, yeah, I can't not right. think there's something, you know? You know, I, I think the only rebuttal I have to is, like, the, the DMT yeah, chemical that. that we mm -hmm. talked about. But even still, like, even if you are hallucinating while you're passing... Because it almost, to me, it almost seems like a, uh, I don't think that there's ever a point, regardless of people want to say, maybe there's some people who have came so close to death that maybe they can understand it, but I feel like we really don't, we really can't fathom that feeling until it happens, yeah. or we're like, right, like we can feel it coming, or whatever it is, I feel like maybe the body does have like a natural reaction to try and make it easier. Mm -hmm. so it's not so just devastating maybe that's what the chemical yeah. release is but i just i don't know you just never know yeah it's it's one of those ones that everything paranormal and everything to do with you know passing on and what happens after is all you know speculation which i think is super fascinating because when something is speculation obviously there's millions of different opinions yeah and, you know we, we'll only know which one is right until it happens to each person yeah which is 
dark and gloomy, but it's true. It's very fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It's we can't see shit with these. Um, Just switching glasses, it's fine. It's normal. It's a normal thing. Yeah. Sometimes you have to put on glasses. I to always see. bring two glasses wherever I go. You have to. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Shadowlands of Utah, what we're going to do. Okay. I'm super excited for it. This is the first time I'm talking about it on stream. So, oh, hey, let's read Dirty Forest, this thing. My mom woke up and saw somebody kneeling at the end of her bed. And she thought it was just my dad, but he was sleeping next to her. It freaked her out. It was a few years ago, but that's when weird shit happened there. Like the Ouija board piece flying. Oh, I didn't know that. That's terrifying. Oh, okay. So we had Kneeling. a... Kneeling? Re- like, like on the ground or like on top of the bed? Because that would be scary if they were on top of the bed. <laughs> like, so... Either way, that's scary. Forrest and I had an experience with a Ouija board in his basement. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I've told this before on stream, but I'll reiterate it since it's relevant right now. Um, him and I kind of had this unspoken agreement where we don't fuck with each other when it comes to paranormal stuff because we really just want to know. Just curious. We're just curious. We want to know what is out there. Yeah. And I believe, I believe it was him and I using it, and nothing was happening or whatever. And I took my finger off, and I think he took his finger off, and that little, this little planchette type thing it wasn't this one specifically this is just a hasbro toy one mm-hmm. the one we had was more authentic well authentic if you believe in it mm-hmm. that thing flew it flew off the table probably like three or four feet like how what do you like how does anything explain that you know like did we try we've tried we've talked about this for years this happened I don't think we were still in high school. We were out of high school, but this was probably close to five or six years ago. And still to this day, I think about it. And I'm like, couldn't tell you what it was. I like listen to people. Like back then, I'd hear people's stories. I'm like, oh my God, that's so scary. But now I hear stuff like that. And I'm like, you can't deny shit, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, you just can't. Like, in my head, all the experiences that I've ever had, I, I try over and mm-hmm. over and over just to be like, well, what if it was this? What if it was that? And there's a couple that I still just can't. Like when I go investigating, if I experience something, I will immediately go around and figure out like what it could have been just so I can validate. Like I would do it in that moment because I know I'll regret it if I don't. Right. So I try to, but. Well, and I think with the we, we tried, we'd see us fling that shit. Yeah, we tried mimicking it. Me and him both tried to like. <laughs> Like, use our fingers and try and slightly, like, flick it to see if, like, maybe one of us was fucking with each other. Yeah. But, like... The fact that it was, like, four feet. The amount of force that you would have to, like, use in your finger to flick it is so obvious that you're flicking it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it would be... Like, you just wouldn't... You would be able to notice, right? Or you'd be able to look at each other and be like, oh. And this is the shitty part is, like, a lot of the things that we have witnessed aren't recorded, so we can't justify them to people. You know, because we'll tell, we've told the stories hundreds of times, like, well, what if it was this? What if it was that? And it's like, no, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So unless you really have, like, video proof of things, it's hard to... It's so, like, people don't understand how lucky it is to get shit on camera. Because it's always... People always have stuff happen to them off camera. Like, that's why you hear all these ghost stories. But, yeah. like, once, like, you see the stuff and it's crazy. It's... How many millions and millions of hours do you think have been filmed with just nothing? Oh, I can't even You know, it's... Because you can't, like, as cool of an idea it is to go investigate places, the odds of something actually happening are slim. You know, that's, that's like, with all my stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I've, I've gone almost, a, well, I don't want to say all the big places, but a lot of the big places here in Utah, and 90% of the time, nothing's ever happened. And then the 10% of the time is like, okay, well, what was that? And then you have to start questioning yourself and questioning what you saw mm-hmm. and seeing if it was real, but... It sucks that, <laughs> I mean, now that we have, you know, amazing cameras on our phone, yeah. it's easier to capture stuff on the fly. And, like, the people I go with, I'm like, you need to go into it not expecting stuff to happen like this. Because, right. I mean, I'll go for nine hours and have, just, like, two amazing things happen. And that's worth it to me. Oh, like, yeah. Like, you can't expect things just to happen like crazy all night. Like No. It's not, you can't, you, have you to can't. Be patient, 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 patient. But. I think what happens is a lot of people obviously watch like ghost adventures and different things like that. Mm-hmm. And they forget 
that like the 30, well, I think they do hour long episodes. The hour long episodes we're watching is actually like 12, 13 hours of them filming. I went and sat outside when they were um, investigating the Ted Bundy house over here. Yeah. And we sat, I was only there for half the time and we sat out there for about five hours. Right. While they were investigating. So like, yeah, you don't even know how long they're in there. Yeah. And, so. and Ghost Adventures specifically does a really good job of making their show have exciting parts mm -hmm. because they i mean a they're good at what they do they're mm -hmm. entertainers but b you know when they see something it spooks them too yeah you know because yeah. you, you're not expecting it when you're sitting there for five hours and nothing's happening and then something finally happens of course it's gonna perk your ears and get you excited have you seen uh buzzfeed unsolved I haven't. Okay, I need you to watch that series because... BuzzFeed Unsolved? So it's these two guys. It's Ryan and Shane. And Ryan is like a big believer in ghosts. And Shane is the biggest skeptic. Okay. And they both go ghost hunting. And it's like the most refreshing thing to watch because when something genuine happens and this guy who doesn't believe in it and he's like, yeah, I can't explain it. Like, this? Yeah, them. Okay. So they go ghost hunting. but And it's hilarious. Like... Ryan will go in and he's like, oh, please spirits, don't touch me, don't touch me. And then Shane goes and he's like, fuck with me demons, I dare you, push me down the stairs, you know, like, it's, you would really like it, it's really good. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the, something like that is what I want to capture with the show mm -hmm. that we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, actually, a lot of people here are going to be on the show. Forrest yep. is going to be on, Bebert's going to be on, you and I, and then two others. I'm super excited for it because I think that the places we're going to go have some history. Oh, my... Okay. So, Skinwalker Ranch. I told my stepdad we were going there and he has... He had a crazy story about Skinwalker Ranch. Please do tell. So, his... So, his past wife, her niece... So, like, his niece-in-law. Um, she's, like, in her 50s now, but... She grew, she grew up around there, um, and she used to go, because there's a Indian reservation there, right. the American reservation, and so she would go, I don't know if she went with her family, she held to something, but um, she went with her friend, and I guess her friend that lived there followed a guy who was riding his horse out there by Skinwalker Ranch, and so she, he fol she followed him and like hid in a bush. And he disappeared and then he came back and he was covered in animal skin, just like blood all over and was like going really, really fast and did not look at her, but just pointed at her as he's riding by. What the fuck? Like he knew he's, and then for the rest of her life, she had the worst luck. Like she knew she would got cursed. From really? That. Yeah. He like just rode fast and he just pointed at her. Didn't even look. So. So I'm going to, Skinwalker Ranch is probably the most. I'm so excited. It, it, very fascinating place. But I have something that I haven't told anyone yet that might happen. I haven't told Forrest. I haven't told Bieber. I told you. haven't told anyone. Okay. I have a friend who is, he watches sometimes. If you're here, you're welcome to mention. I won't say names yet because I don't want to get too overhyped. He's very well connected in the business world. He has a lot of people he knows. Uh-huh. One of those people are is the best friend of the current owner of Skinwalker Ranch. Oh, um, the one that is on the History Channel show, the owner, the business guy, the very, you know, I don't I don't remember his name off the top of my head, but the very like, yeah, I know let's get some answers, suit and tie type of guy. Yeah. So he might be willing for the show to reach out to him to see if we can get some. Uh, I don't want to say VIP, but potentially some uh more access to skinwalker that would be so, oh my god um that would be so cool yeah i oh that'd be so cool it would be a dream come true in my eyes because you know i i like a lot of people i watch the skinwalker show and um why is guy fieri who's guy fieri who's guy fieri i don't know him because he's a beard I mean, I get it that like all like chubby fat guys with beards look the same, but <laughs> I've never been called Guy Fieri before. That's a new one, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Weird. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it'd be super if it pans out. 
that would be huge. Um, I'm just gonna pull. I'm gonna pull up the places we're gonna go because I'm super fast. I'm, I'm like most excited for Skinwalker Ranch because I've never been. You've never been? No. It's gonna be a blast. I'm so excited. I kind of want to make Skinwalker Ranch a big thing with like, a bunch of people. I also think we should like send people off by themselves with their own cameras oh. for a lot of it. I think that would be so fun. Right. And also be really funny because I'm sure a lot of us would get really Bang. funny and scared. Yeah. I like that idea a lot. Yeah. Because Skinwalker Ranch, like, the land out there is fascinating. So Forrest and I have been up there three or four times. We've actually streamed up there, funny enough. Yeah, you we showed tweeted. me a clip from yeah. that spooky, or the picture. Yeah. yeah. We, uh, we've we Twitch streamed up there, and uh, the land, it's, what Skinwalker Ranch, like, the ranch itself isn't on that large of a land. There's not a lot of land that is quote-unquote owned by that ranch mm-hmm. but there's a lot of area around there but there's also like oil tanker like oil pumps and yeah <laughs> i don't think i've ever told this story live and i i feel kind of we were driving it was pretty late we were driving past some homes out there mm-hmm. and there was some interesting things going on in some of these homes we mean? weren't we weren't driving like we kind of got lost on this road and then there was just like a bunch of houses and we're like okay and like someone in the car happened to like glance over this house boy do people out in that area get into some wild things <laughs> what do you mean i don't know he's laughing he knows what i'm talking about there was i don't know you can't just say that not tell me <laughs> i feel like it's really weird they were very interesting looking human being was very naked with his windows wide open doing things that just didn't seem natural it's just me on a tuesday night dude (laughs) casual tuesday i think it was the butt that's my sister-in-law oh Hmm. shouts out yeah i don't know why you think it's cool to call my friend guy fairy but yeah it's kind of rude but you know thanks for hanging out so the locations that we're gonna do so i guess i'll paint the bigger picture right um I always had this desire. I'm sure Forrest and Chat had similar desires. Um, where we, when we went and investigated all these places, we always wanted to record, but for some reason or another, <laughs> when you order Guy Fieri off, damn. That's rude! A <laughs> rib. <laughs> um, I mean, they're saying that's you. So yeah, that's it's fucking shitty. It's rude. I mean, I can't. It's all right. Asshole. You usually get called like store brand, like Action Bronson or my Sto- my my brother's named Kyle. Yeah. He drinks energy drinks, and we call him the Walmart Chad. The Walmart so, Chad. Yeah. Um, Forrest and I had investigated a lot of places, and we always wished that we would have uh, recorded it. And the site that we used to find all these places in Utah was called Shadowlands of Utah, and I think they still might be running. I don't know if they are or not, but the website hasn't been updated for better half of 10 15 years Mm -hmm. so the name shadowlands of utah the show that we're doing is kind of paying homage to that because that was where we found all these creepy spots (laughs) and uh i i don't know it's going to be fun so we're going to try and shoot we're going to do one season for sure 10 episodes it's going to probably the episodes are going to launch in fall during the Halloween season, because I want to get these more, I, I, I want to edit them, and I want them to be good. Are we just putting on YouTube? Yeah. Okay. If we, I'll talk to you about some stuff afterwards that might happen. Either, we'll I, I have. We'll be on TV, for sure. I, I've, I've, I've talked to a couple people who might be interested in sponsoring the show. That'd be so cool. And then I've talked to a couple people who are like, hey, what do you know about this TV station? I'm like, I don't know anything about that TV station, but I'd like to. I can't wait to be on the BYU TV channel at 3 a.m. <laughs> yes, let's go. It's, it's weird. It's a it's a low-key dream of mine to be on just public access television. Oh, anything. Like, me. just, I would I'd record that shit and just be like, look, oh, Ma. Whenever I, I was it. in the background in the news, I'd call all my family. <laughs> like, dude, check out the news. Can you the news. I'm here. <laughs> Um, so here's the list of the 10 locations that we're going to do for our first season. Um, we're start, my idea was the first episode, the fifth episode and the 10th episode are going to be 
super big places. Mm -hmm. And then in between, we're going to fill in with some smaller places that are more locally known. So the first episode I'm doing is Dugway, mm -hmm. which is Dugway Proving Grounds. It is quoted as the new Area 51. I've spent a lot of time out there. No um, the West Desert is a very interesting place when you go out there. Oh, is that by Tooele out there? Yeah. Okay. No. Oh, yes, I have in there. Um, okay. That one's probably going to be more informative versus actually seeing anything, but who knows? Maybe we'll capture something in the sky or maybe even something more crazy. Okay, that just blew my mind because my stepdad grew up at by Tooele, and mm -hmm. he told me a crazy UFO story, but I'll save it for later. Yeah, I mean, lots of shit that goes out there. Yeah. Um, second is Ogden City Cemetery. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Ogden City Cemetery is fascinating because there's numerous reports of activity there and, and cemeteries to me are kind of cliche but we have a couple on this first season and they, they sound kind of cool i don't know i mean i feel like you're like i mean they're cliche but it's a, for a reason a field full of dead people so yeah. i mean you have a pretty good chance of something happening right yeah um third is k's cross Case Cross is probably top tier Utah legends. I my mean, brother, I think my brother has an experience there. Everyone that I know who has any, who went to high school around here or yep. knows what Case Cross is, um, I do have a friend. So, did you ever watch the show Fact or Fake Paranormal Investigation with something oh Hanson? Yeah. Oh, okay. I forgot about that show. Yes, I the Hanson guy who who runs that show, yeah, is the brother of someone I went to school with. That's amazing. Yes, and here's the shitty part: when I was in junior high, they did a fucking you know where they job fair thing where like a bunch of parents come. He came. He came, and I didn't oh. see him. He came. He was an FBI director at the time. You. And that's his whole thing. It. That's his whole thing, right? Is he was an FBI director who quit, and he's interested in investing. Yeah. Part. Oh my god. So him so cool. him and his brother Luke, who I, you know, was peers with. I mean, we were cool. We weren't we never hung out, but we were cool. Um, they went and debunked one of the myths at Case Crossing, which is the lights that reflect off of the cross mm -hmm. are actually just lights that reflect from the freeway in a perfect situation to yeah. hit the cross. Um, but that's going to be a big that's going to be a cool one. Big Cottonwood Canyon is one that <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I am excited about that one. Big Cottonwood Canyon has a lot of death surrounding it. I know Ted Bundy yep. killed someone up there. Ted Bundy killed someone up there. And people have drowned in the river. People have died on the roads because during the winter season, it, it, it gets terrifying to drive up there. Yeah, Big Cottonwood Canyon has a lot of different lore around it, a lot of different legends from, you know, spirits singing by the riverside. Love that. You know, all the way from, like, the feeling of being chased, like people running, like wind blowing past you, like it feels like someone's running past you, like just. Okay, well, if I go and I'm being chased, I'm chubby and I don't run, so <laughs> if they're going to get me, they're just going to get me. <laughs> if I die, I die. If that's how I go, that's how I go. Uh, <laughs> uh, the fifth episode, so the other big one mid-season, is Mountain Meadows. I've never even heard of this. Mountain Meadows is a fascinating one. Mountain Meadows is popular because of a massacre during okay. the mormon pioneer time oh um okay. don't quote me on this but from what i understand is the mormons had murdered fuck it we'll just pull it up hold on where is this at it's pretty far away it's like two or three hours mountain Those dang mormons <laughs> meadows massacre The Mount Meadow, Mountain Meadows Massacre was a series of attacks which resulted in the mass murder of 120 members of the Baker French immigrant wagon train. The massacre occurred on September 7th through the 11th of 1857 at Mountain Meadows in southern Utah and was prep and was um, it was done by Mormon settlers belonging to the Utah Territorial Militia officially called the Navajo Legion. This does sound familiar. Yeah, it's a super, you know, it's a pretty big part of history mm -hmm. in Utah. And uh, I know out where the specific murder happened, they have like, kind of like 
I don't want to say like a monument, but there's like designated areas that have kind of been done up and stuff. Yeah. And uh, not that I've heard a lot of paranormal stories, but I think if there's going to be one, it's probably the murder of 120 people in cold blood. Yeah. Yep. You know, and... That's traumatizing. There, there's been some stories of people seeing shit out there and like anytime you get into Navajo culture and death and investigation there's always some sort of very fascinating lore um i might even reach out to um a friend who is uh who is a navajo who might have who might come or might be a part of the episode too to kind of give his perspective on it as well oh that'd be dope um i think that would definitely add to it Mm -hmm. um next is the alpine cemetery the Alpine Cemetery, I picked specifically because there's two spots there that are paranormal hotspots. There is a cement bench that someone wanted as their gravestone. And not saying that we'll do this. We'll kind of see. I'm going to read a couple things because I don't want it to be disrespectful. But story goes, if you sit on the cem- if you sit on this chair bench thing, that it gets freezing cold and it will feel like someone's grabbing your shoulders. Mm. Um, And then at different parts of this same cemetery, there are um, stories of seeing apparitions running and playing in this field. Oh. So that one could be kind of interesting. That would be cool. Um, Steed's Pond is up in Clearfield. Mm. That one is cool because it's... There's a pond where there's people who've been who drowned, but then also it's where the train ran through, and oh, there's okay. there's this little like I, I've been there. I almost fell in the fucking lake when it was frozen. We were walking across this frozen lake, and now I, I can't. I don't know how to swim. Oh, no, low key. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, that's good. It's yeah. a good thing to do to yeah, walk across that. Thing. Yeah, you don't know how to swim. Yeah, my friends said they had me. They had me. I wasn't stressed. Um, I was super stressed. Yeah, I would be too. Um, there's like a tunnel thing and one muddy west. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was a mess. I ruined I ruined brand new shoes. Oh, oh no. it was bad. Um, there's like this bridge type thing. I, I don't even know how to say it. It's like like a path that was built through an old bridge, kinda. Mm-hmm. And uh people said they've heard trains. Just straight oh. up trains. Um there's also like, you know, since it was forced labor a lot of the time with Chinese and Scottish and I believe African Americans building the railroads, like there's a lot of bad energy that goes with it. So yeah, that okay. place apparently has some pretty uh, negative feelings. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, Hobbs Hollow, which I've also been to, that's up in Kaysville, Layton area. Uh, Forrest has an awful story about Hobbs Hollow where he uh, jumped on a rope swing and ripped something that shouldn't be ripped um it sounds familiar probably everyone kind of knows that knows that story it was bad um but hobbs hollow is a creepy place especially at night it just feels weird there's it's one of the besides skinwalker ranch it's one of the only other places where i've gone where the whole time i felt like something was off yeah and since i'm not a swimmer i don't know this but they say that random times the current like there's a current that happens and like it almost feels like waves and Weird. there's it's just a pond yeah. there's no like there shouldn't be a current and that sometimes it feels like there's like whirlpools and there's been a lot of people who have drowned there there's also been rumors that bodies have been dumped in that pond oh to hot, be hidden because yeah. it's kind of in if you don't know about where it's at, you wouldn't just like randomly come across it. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's interesting. The nine on the list to me is going to be the most, one of the most fascinating ones if I can make it happen. So in Bountiful, Utah, there's an old museum. I was talking to Cass about this the other day. Yes. She was really excited about it. It's been abandoned for a long time and. Uh, it just looks fascinating. Everyone in Bountiful is super fascinated by mm-hmm. it. It's supposedly haunted. People have... There are videos out there 
of people recording what looks like apparitions walking past the windows, or at least lights mm -hmm. walking past the windows when no one's supposed to be in there. The problem being is since the last thing it was was a museum, it's rumored that there's still LDS and Mormon artifacts in there. So I feel like getting access would be very difficult, especially since I'm not part of the faith and I don't have a good reason besides documentation. I can fake it real good. Send me in. <laughs> I'll send you in. I'm a child of God, bitch. <laughs> send me in. Um, for, there you go. So Forrest talking about Hobbs Hollow says, I swam across it. It's a night. It's a nightmare. It feels like you're escaping Alcatraz. Oh, I don't like that. And then last but not least, of course, is Skinwalker Ranch. Um, I think that's going to be our big blow-up episode because if we play our cards right and I am and we get filming done properly, I want to try and release the final episode as the History Channel is releasing their episodes because yeah. their second season is coming out in the fall. Okay. <coughs> just for trend I'm reasons. excited you chose me for that one because yeah well and that's the thing is we have a team right so I, I said it earlier Probably not myself like set schedule, but. yeah myself and Kaylee B. Burton and Forrest um, so that's Brittany and Forrest and then Holly and Cass if you guys are familiar with this podcast you know who I'm talking about if you aren't you'll see him in the episodes or you'll, you can go back and watch um, this podcast They've all been on it besides Bebert, um, but she's going to be there involved and having fun. Um, this, this, what I kind of want to do is get, get an opportunity to go with everyone individually and then everyone kind of with groups, mm -hmm. but the cast isn't set for each one. So yeah. if people want to go to more, people want to go to less, it's all open. I dip, I, I dip Skinwalker. Yeah. Skinwalker is Sorry be, about it. Skinwalker is going to be the best one. I'm so I'm so pumped for we it. We should just sleep out there. I I'm definitely toying with that idea. I think if, if you can like any of the places, just yeah. everyone separates and by themselves. I think that would be I think, amazing. I think Dugway is going to require staying the night or doing an all nighter. Mountain Meadows is definitely going to be staying at some sort of hotel. Yeah, because that's I think that's like three or four hours away. And Skinwalker Ranch, even though I've done the trip multiple times, going out there, investigating, and then coming back on the same trip, not, it's a lot. Not, yeah. it's not fun. So if there's a point in time where we find somewhere to camp out there or just like a nice, cheap, cheapy hotel. Oh, I'm taking a sleeping bag. I'm sleeping on that ranch. <laughs> I would. If that's I an, really would. If that's an option that pans out where they're like, yeah, you guys can just fucking sleep here. 100%. Of course. 100%. I'm not refusing. Yeah, I would. But I'm super excited. You know, whether or not we capture anything, I think it's just going to be a fun experience. And, you know, documenting stuff like this is just cool to have. I, I think a lot of it's going to be really funny. Yeah. Because knowing me, when I'm scared, I have funny reactions. Yes. <laughs> I get stress burps. <laughs> so... <laughs> so Sometimes I start singing to myself when I get scared. It's, yeah, I'm excited. I think we'll get a lot of funny footage, too. I don't know what I'm going to be like, because I haven't really done anything super spooky in a long time. Yeah. So I don't know. If... It'll be good. I'm excited. And I know I know Forrest doesn't, like, he just gets pumped up. Yeah. Um, Bebert, Brittany, sh that's going to be funny. Yeah. She, she screams if she sees a small spider so i can only imagine I mean, if she sees a yeah. sees a ghost i'm sure cass and holly would be hilarious oh, yeah too. they're just gonna be a that's gonna be a meme fest oh, for, yeah, sure. for sure I, I i just think that it's gonna be one of those shows that when it's all said and done it's gonna be a lot of fun and mm -hmm. you know i always keep a level head when it comes to like you know blowing up or having something really get exposed to the world but i think if we all do a good job of this it could be big for everybody oh 100 percent. i believe it you know even if it's not even if we end up doing multiple seasons of it or you know we get picked up by somebody or you know it goes to a different state i think there's something that will come of it mm -hmm. which is super exciting i think if everyone's like excited about it and willing to work really hard i think it easily could blow up like crazy yeah i don't know like there's 
Because there's... like I'm already like really famous, obviously. Right. So everyone's gonna tune in anyway. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm just kidding, everyone. <laughs> I mean, you're kidding, but at the same time, like, your TikTok's I'm, doing pretty I'm good. No, I mean, no. I mean, how many followers 30, do you have? 30,000 isn't like. 30, okay. But you say that, and like, compared to like big TikTok people, sure, but like. I have friends from high school that have like 2 million, fo- two million followers. Yeah, okay, that's a lot. But 30,000 fills a stadium. I'm, okay, here I'm gonna give you an example. Let me let me pull some numbers here. I joke about being famous because I'm not. I I I hate people like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean so much because I have a lot of followers. Let's see. All right, so you know, you know where the Smiths Ballpark is, mm-hmm. where the bees play. Yeah. Okay, you could fill that whole stadium twice. You're lying! The capacity there is 14,511. That's a lot of fucking people. Okay, that is a lot of people. That's <laughs> you know? pretty cool. I, mean, I don't even know how many people could fit in this house. Like, maybe like 300? You'd fill, you'd fill 100 of these houses. Man. It doesn't feel like that, though. It's weird. <laughs> like, I just put on a costume and people like it, and I don't get it. It's because it's, <laughs> it's quality. It Thank really you. is funny. You like, usually spend about five minutes on it. So. I, I've shown everyone all all your TikToks. I'm like, <laughs> God bless. You gotta look at this shit. One day, one day I'll do Guy Fieri again. But yeah, you gotta like we talked about earlier on. I think the the Guy Fieri thing was like it's like a tasteful little kiss in mm-hmm. there once in a while. Where you're just yeah. like I'll just surprise people. Yeah, you know, you can't plan it. But They'll like, never know when it's coming. The mood's right. All of a sudden, Guy Fieri's at like a fucking I don't know. I've, I just like picture like. What's the craziest places you can get Guy Fieri at? Like just, I'm t- maybe one of our episodes. Damn, that would. I just won't be... even acknowledge it. Wouldn't that be funny if I like dressed up as Guy Fieri for something and I just like didn't even acknowledge it? It would be, it would be so hilarious yeah. because like, especially if you're like, especially we're like Skinwalker Ranch, <laughs> and like all of us I'm, are like, dressed genuinely scared. Yeah, all of us are jet like dressed accordingly, like kind of like sweaters and hoodies, like you know, maybe yeah. black clothing and whatnot. And yeah. then you're just dressed up as Guy Fieri. No, we one, just, no one says a thing. No one says mm-hmm. a word. Mm-hmm. That'd be quality. <laughs> got like the bright, got the bright mm-hmm. white blonde HDM hair. Every episode would be so good. Oh my god. <laughs> Everyone would be so confused, <laughs> especially if like, because <laughs> like the episodes, like I kind of want to make them like halfway serious. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and then you're just. I just picture you like if we did the idea where like everyone's recording on yeah. their own. Yeah, majority majority of time I'm like I take it seriously, so you can imagine. Uh, Bean dot JPEG says Skinwalker Ranch is too close to <gasps> SLC. For Messer, is that you, my dude? Skinwalker Ranch is. Is it? I don't even know where it is really. Skinwalker Ranch is in Roosevelt. It's about two and a half hours away. Oh, hours that's away. not bad. Yeah. It is. What's up, dude? It's a trip. It's a trip, but it's a trip that. It's kind of nice. It's like you pass strawberry and then kind of just like a beautiful oh, drive. Okay. Okay. It's kind of, it's definitely kind of long, but. It's worth it. If you don't, if you like drives, it doesn't feel long, but if you don't like drives, then it's like. I take, uh, yeah. Anything above 10 hours starts to get a little long, but yeah. You're looking so handsome, my guy. Yeah, look at him. Look at Thanks. that shirt he's wearing. Thanks. Tropical shirt. Yeah. Try to do tropical. Every once in a while. Yeah. You know, I like plants. Plants are I also cool. like plants. I think blue brings out my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Naruto sure. hat. Like, yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Who doesn't like Naruto? Yeah. Ever Naruto run just down the street for fun? Yeah, if I ever feel like running, which is never. <laughs> True. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, when we when we were on last time, you mm-hmm. were talking about wanting to do like your own podcast and different things like that. Mm-hmm. Where do you sit on that still? Um, eventually, I, I do. Yeah. I'm at a spot in my life where I was like at rock bottom, and I was like, I mean, I can go up from here, and then life was like, ha ha, here's a shovel, and I was like, dope. Fuck. So... I'm just working on some things, but I feel like once I'm in a good spot, yeah, I want to do it, you know? 
you know I, I do I like I feel like I could, I could be good at it I know it's corny to say this and you know I don't know all the details but you know from at least from my perspective on like you know I've hit the rock bottom spot in my head like a couple times in my life too. and <laughs> too. you know I will say the best thing about hitting rock bottom is when you start going back to where you want mm-hmm. it feels really good yeah like Ment like mental health wise, I haven't felt this good in years. Like already, like oh, I'm already, good. yeah, I'm on the highway to hell, my guy. <laughs> highway to hell. Yep. No, nah, it's that's good to hear. Yeah. No, nah, I think it'd be fun. I mean, that's we talked about podcasting and the whole idea. Mm-hmm. Of spent some time on it last time, but and everyone's like, if you were to do it, like, what would your topics be? And I don't think I would have one. Just talk about whatever. Yeah. I don't. That's the thing. Is like. I think podcasts, there's two distinct routes you go. If you're going to do something specific, you always follow that, mm-hmm. and you, you stay in that niche. But if you just cover anything, like, it just lets you free flow so much better. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, I don't think I can ever really focus on something because I have ADHD. Right. The world is so... I agree. That is so inspiring. Thank you. <laughs> you have to meet them. They're very, a very sarcastic person. Love it. Yeah. No, but I agree. Like, why why limit yourself? It's true. Like, it is true. You know, what, what's some of the most popular podcasts in the world? Aside from aside from anything that's regarding true crime, most of the other big podcasts in the world don't limit themselves to one category. It's true. You know? And also the ones that are true crime that are really big, like, they bring in other elements. That, yes. You know, it's not just strictly. Like, last podcast on the left. Like Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Hilarious and great. And it's, you know, it just makes it more interesting when they bring other elements, just not yeah. focus on one thing. Because you, you get to see what they're, you get to see the characters. That I think that's the thing that a lot of people who get into podcasting don't initially realize. And I wish I did. I'm not, I'm not trying to get people to necessarily like my content right away. Mm-hmm. I want them to like me. Yeah. And if you go on with that idea, just like getting people to like you, you'll you'll have a follow. Yeah. Because yeah. like if all your famous people on podcasting, do you watch it because the content's good or do you watch it because the creators you like them. Good? Yeah, it's true. I mean, I watch a lot of Twitch streams and by God, I haven't played half the video games most of these people play. Oh yeah, I like I watch gamers all the time on YouTube, but I literally just watch them because they're hilarious. Yeah. I don't know what I I don't do video games at all, but yeah. they're so entertaining and funny. Yeah. So. Markiplier, big one. <sighs> Markiplier, I love Markiplier. Yeah, he's, he's um, the good old. Do you know who Sea Nanners is? Dude. <sighs> I'm obsessed with Sea Nanners. Sea Nanners. He has the best laugh Sea Nanners changed my trajectory in life. Yes, and whenever I'm sad, I always pull up any I was, prop hunt, usually. Prop, it's I go, usually prop I go to the one where he was playing with Gassy Mexican and yes. the Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. It's just so yes. good. I smell you. I oh. smell you. It's so like <laughs> so on good. point. No, I uh I so I was a YouTube kid, like right when YouTube came out, I was yeah. all about it. Yeah. C Anders was one of the first people on there. Mm-hmm. I watched him all the way through, you know, Machinima and Respawn and mm-hmm. all the way through Minecraft until now. And I was actually really devastated when he stepped away for you know, a couple of years. But when he came back, I literally <sighs> I was like, oh, shit. I was like, yelled. I was like, oh, my God. I was so excited. Yeah. Oh, my God. I just love him. He's one of the best. He's just like, just you know, wholesome. you get these. He, that, yeah. Just That's wholesome. the word. Wholesome. He's just a wholesome guy. Also, Game Grumps is also one of my very favorites uh, because yes. they make me, like, beat myself laugh. I was so disappointed that I didn't get to see a Ninja Sex Party. My brother and sister-in-law went. I think she's still watching, but I'm so mad I didn't go. Yeah. Because they came here, yeah, and I would just, at the time, there wasn't anyone that I knew who was like, yeah, I, I, I didn't even, I look back and it's dumb, but I didn't even want to ask anyone, like, hey, you want to go to this thing called Ninja Sex Party? Because like, like, that's a hard pitch, yeah. if they don't know what it They're is. Like, mm, no. <laughs> I also wish I would have went to the Game Grumps Live. Oh, that that's my dream, here. dude. It's so good. They're so funny. They're 10 minute power hours. <sighs> just they're just the so bangers. Good. They're just dynamic to get like, oh my god, they're just good. Their dynamic just reminds me so much of like growing up with like really close friends. Yeah. You know, like you yeah. can tell they're authentically like mm-hmm. just good friends. Yeah. And you just don't. And their timing, like their comedic timing, playing off of each other. 
Super good. Just friends playing games. Yeah. <laughs> Nuts. Yeah, I like them a lot too. Yeah. YouTube, I don't know. That, I think that's why, because I always told myself, and you know, the biggest regrets people always have is when they wait too long to do something. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest regret. It's like, I wanted to start making content in like eighth grade, mm -hmm. but I never did. Never did, never did, never did, never did. Until finally I started doing it. Best decision of my life. I've been yeah. way happier if I would have started back when it wasn't flooded. <laughs> I, I mean, that's what I've always wanted to do is like entertain and YouTube has always been such a big part. Like, that's all I do every yeah. day is I watch YouTube. But like, I'm like, oh, that'd be so cool if I did YouTube. Like, I feel like maybe I could be doing it. And then I just doubted myself. And I started TikTok and that blew up. And I'm like, oh, shit, maybe I can like actually do this. And so yeah. I'm like really thinking about it. Oh, I it's one of those things where, like, if you are have the same thought process I have, where you're just, like, I just want to entertain, and, like, mm -hmm. like I, I grew up with, like, Markiplier, right, mm -hmm. where, like, he literally was saving kids' lives, and he didn't even know. Yeah. It. You yeah. know? Yeah. Like, I want to, I know it sounds egotistical in a way, but, like, he helped me through shit, like, C-Nanners and all those other yeah. guys. Yeah, like, no, no, I agree, like. That's I say, like, whenever I'm having a hard time, I my go-to is those people that genuinely make me laugh. And I don't, yeah. they don't realize, like... No, I'm just one of the hundreds of millions of people who yeah, watch their like videos. Yeah, they don't really, And that's, a, I mean, then the same thing, that's what I want to do. Like, my favorite thing in the world is making someone laugh. Like, yeah. I love it. Like, if I can, like, just take time out of someone's day and, like, make them happy or smile, like, that's what I like to do. So I'm not, like, doing it because I want to get fame or whatever. No. Like, I just like to make people happy. No, and I... I always tell people too because I'm, I'm getting into the space now where I'm able to talk, on, where I do interviews where I talk to people who are wanting to podcast mm -hmm. and, you know, the first thing I always say is like if you're in it for the money, find something else to yeah. do. Yeah. You know, if you're yeah. in it for the fame, find something else to do because like, the reality is very slim of you of blowing up. If you, you don't know, love what you do. If you don't love what you do, and if you're in it for the wrong, I don't get me wrong. There's plenty of people who are in, who went in for the money and they got the money mm -hmm. but it's few and far between yeah it's a long road they say they say on average now it's seven years for a podcast to become like the well-known enough that it's mm -hmm. you know i mean i think people recognize hard work you yeah. know and dedication and for sure i think people are like oh he really loves what he's doing you know yeah and it's just, just trust me i i've there's times where I've skipped episodes because I just was like, man, I just don't want to do it tonight. Mm -hmm. There's times where I just, you know, I've canceled things or I've, you know, pushed things back or whatever. And then I always regret it because I'm like, why don't I want to do it? Yeah. And then when I do it, I'm like, yeah, why was my mind like, even thinking that? Thinking it was that? great. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's just, it's not always easy. And that's, it's not always easy as pressing play and going. What was your first intense paranormal experience, most scary paranormal experience? Um, and how are you guys today? Go Eagles, I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Um, peachy. Peachy. Um, my first intense paranormal experience. I think that really like made me start thinking was probably in this house with a door slamming when I was probably in it was either right on the cusp of the end of elementary or at the start of junior high um, I've told this story before and sadly it's the door that's right here I love that, I love that <laughs> um, the short story because I think I told this last week so I don't want to repeat stories too often but family was sleeping it was late at night we got woken up by what sounded like a door slamming. We thought someone was breaking into the house, ran across the whole entire house, couldn't find anything, tried to figure out what, what door slammed. We concluded that it was a basement door that doesn't lead to indoor or outdoor at all. It's just to a crawl space. And still to this day, we don't know what could have caused yeah, it. that's weird. There's, you know, there's... <laughs> damn. There's a... Uh, there's possibilities of wind and windows and all that jazz. But the problem is, is that door doesn't, we never have it like a jar because. Also, that's probably never happened before to where it slammed no, hard. No, it hasn't probably. happened since. We don't ever open that door unless we're going in there because mm -hmm. there's 
when we first moved in, there was mice that got in there, so we keep mouse traps and mouse poison in there, and we have cats. Yeah. And we don't want them to go in there and eat it and die. I'm a big buff rat. Like yeah. <laughs> that would be... It was that rat It had from, to be that. What was that rat meme, like, three or four years ago from fucking oh. Barnyard? <laughs> Terrifying, though. Yeah. scary. <laughs> Biggie um, cheese? My first paranormal experience, I think, was when I was, like... I was like nine or ten, but I was sleeping in my bed and I woke up because I felt someone grabbing my ankles at the end of the bed, like really hard. Fuck. And so I'm like little, so I'm like, I don't want to look. Like I was like, I don't want to look and see what it is, you know? And so I, I feel them let go. <laughs> so I feel them let go and I like, I go back to bed and I thought it was a dream, right? Right. And then I wake up and I have bruises around my ankles in the shape of fingers. No shit. Yeah. I'll tell you more about it, Messer, tomorrow. But yeah, that was like my first real, and there was like little things, but like that was the first one that really. Did you ever suffer from like sleep paralysis? No, I've never had sleep paralysis. Oh god, that's <laughs> like creeps me out. I had I had stuff happen in my old house all the time. Here's the question: Do we go to your where where you're at now and try and investigate? I have been making a list of places I would really like to investigate with you if you want I'm, at some point. I'm more than down because even though I want Shadowlands to be like a big thing, mm-hmm. I also just am down to do one-offs. Yeah. Um, I also have my handy dandy Ouija board. I won't. I won't do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will not. I, I'm, I'm still torn on the Ouija board even after having an experience just because... Do I cry um, while ghost honey? Wes does. All the time. Pussy. Yeah. Just straight, <laughs> just straight up tear, tears of fear. <laughs> no, I, uh, it's made by Hasbro. You know, if Hasbro is selling Ouija boards, I just, it's tough. But then there's Ouija boards that aren't sold by Hasbro that do sketchy things. Oh, I mean, you if you get like a passed down one that done a lot of shit, I bet that one would be like scarier. Yeah. You'd be walking tissue box if you came. <laughs> I'll take you. I'll take you ghost hunting and we'll see if that's true. Get the big fright. Mm-hmm. Nothing, big spook. Yeah, nothing really opens your eyes more than the big spookiness mm-hmm. that just chases after you. Yep. There's a top hat guy in my basement. We, I can introduce you if you'd like. God, that's just so fucking... Yeah. We know, you can come up. Let's investigate my basement. What... Have you thought about setting up like a camera, like a permanent like? I would, but I'm like really lazy. <laughs> also, I don't. Have I, a respect, I respect. I respect. I don't have a camera. I have. I do have like an EMF detector and stuff like that, but I feel like if I'm gonna do it, I want to do it with someone there to yeah. like see it too. You know. God damn, that's just. Oh, it sketches me out. Okay, well, there's a top hat guy in my basement, so come over. Maybe you'll recognize him. I'm also working on, and I don't know when this is going to happen. This is a later project, but are you into horror at all? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm I'm working on a horror short film that hits on a lot of the, the things as humans that we hate. Like, for example, so I'm, I'll give you guys the small pitch, which I haven't talked about this yet either. Um, it's going to be about a gentleman and I'm still working on the details so please bear with me don't judge too hard I'm thinking it's going to be about a gentleman who runs some sort of dark web website where he records himself breaking into houses and recording how easy it would be to either kill or harm individuals in the houses without them even knowing he's there Oh, that is, that's interesting. So it's yeah. going to be like playing on like the, you know, dark rooms with shadows that don't always disappear yeah. when the lights are on. Like, you know, hiding behind like shower curtains. Like, yeah. you know, the fear that everyone has. Um, black Mirror shit. Yeah, sure. some Black Mirror shit. Yeah. Black Mirror is my top time favorite show. I only, I have only watched one episode ever. Did you watch the first episode with no, the pig? I watched Miley Cyrus's episode. Oh, okay. Which is pretty good. 
Yeah, Miley Cyrus pretty is good. pretty good. I always tell people Black Mirror is one of the best shows ever made, and it's going to make you question a lot of your reality. You just yeah. need to get past a couple episodes where you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. The first episode, some guy has to fuck a pig. And it's really off-putting. It happens. And it's really weird. But the reason why he has to do it is deeper than, <laughs> you know, than you Boy. think. Yeah. My favorite show of all time is American Horror Story. Yes, American Horror Story That's is really good. Show. I'm a couple of seasons behind, though. That's need to disappointing. Catch up. Need to catch up. Asylum is definitely my favorite season. Which one? Asylum. Oh, is that like the second one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that mm-hmm. one's really good. Do you see the, um, God, what's the main kid's name? Um, okay. The actor. The, Evan Peters? Yes, Evan Peters. He's starring in, uh, or he's going to play um, serial killer. Who oh, people. Jeffrey Dahmer? Yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer. I will have you know that Evan Peters is my uh, number one celebrity crush. And I have a prayer candle with his face on it. Respect. I have respect. a whole Pinterest board dedicated to him. I love the guy. What's funny is, so, I came across him because he was in one of my favorite childhood movies, Never Back Down. Well, I know who he was because he was in Phil of the Future. Oh, I forgot he was in that. Yeah, he was a weird guy. What the fuck? Yeah. He just shows oh, up randomly in yeah. things. <laughs> So I watched. I was really big into that Never Back Down movie, and I think that was I don't like. Know what that is. It's a. It's really kind of cheesy, but it's like. New kid moves to town, finds out that like the popular kids are all into like, UFC like MMA. Mm-hmm. Goes to a party, this popular MMA, kid, pretty much sets up the whole thing so he has to fight him, and he gets his ass kicked, and it's kind of like him trying to deal with that at school. So Karate Kid. Kind of like Karate Kid. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a new age Karate Kid. But he, Evan Peters plays like, I don't know, kind of like a... Is it a Disney movie? No, no. It's just like a... Weird. It's really... I, I really like it. It doesn't have great ratings, I'll but... I'll have to watch it. It's definitely worth the I watch. I watch anything with him. And he's a young lad in it. He's probably like... I love that. 16, 17. Oh, yeah. I love it. Got the curly hair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Plays a little nerdy MMA like oh, kid. Love we love it. So good, so good. Now I so you said you have a couple places that you want to go investigate. What do you have in mind? Um, and I'm gonna open this. So excuse the noise. That's so rude. Oh my god. Uh, oh okay okay okay. Anyway, um, well number one, my basement would be fun. Number two, I'd love to go to Merker Cemetery. Because that's where I went investigated and I had some crazy experiences there. Where's that one? It's out by Tooele. And there's like, it's an old abandoned mining town cemetery. Okay. And like all the graves are sunken in. It has like the creepy fences around all the graves. And there's nothing for like 10 miles everywhere. And so like when you have that EMF detector and there's no electricity and it goes off and there's like no explanations. That is really insane. weird. Insane. Like I had crazy stuff happen. Like, yeah. Definitely that is would love really to go there. creepy. Mm-hmm. And then, if we could somehow do Fear Factory. Fear Factory would be cool. I want to do Wayton Hills Mall. That's, I, I, I remember you saying that. I, I dug into the research even more. So, I on my Instagram, I post daily, like, Utah things right now. Like, yeah. like Utah haunted places. And I did one on Layton Hills Mall. And it's pretty much like the gambit of crazy shit. Like, to the mm-hmm. point where, like, they have video footage from their security cameras of, like plant potters and the plants just getting ripped out and tossed like really scary sketchy shit and someone actually commented on my post for Layton hills mall and he's like i can 100 percent attest to sketchy shit happening here and he went into detail about like he's like over by this i can't remember which business it is um and where rue 21 is like clothes would just get moved on cameras like no one's there it's like past clothes and clothes would move and okay okay first of all Besser, yeah the one by i-15 and i have evidence that there's stuff there i used to go investigating there all the time but i was telling my friend last night because i remember you talking about investigating the Layton hills mall and i thought it was so funny i was like the late what yeah and the girl was like i have witnessed stuff and she said they open at 5 a.m for old people just to walk yeah <laughs> just so weird 
And so she said it's just the top floor, and she'd go with her grandma sometimes, and it's completely dark under. And she said you would look and hear, like, tons of people walking down there, and it was pitch black, and there was nothing there. Like, all the time. The the rumor the the rumor is, and I hate this stereotypical thing, but it's buried on Indian graves, or is I mean, built on Indian burial it. grounds. I believe it. I didn't. I said buried on yeah, built on Indian burial grounds, and I believe that there is documents to show it. I haven't found them yet. I'm still trying to find them, but mm-hmm. that's what like with my childhood house like. They built it brand new, and there's stuff happening all the time, and so my step's like, stepdad was like, I'm wondering if maybe, you know, you never know. Like, you yeah. never know what was, is buried under there. Yeah. So. I, I sometimes wonder if, about this house. I, there's nothing that's happened to me weird here for a long time, mm-hmm. but, you know, I've had people say that the energy is sometimes is weird here, and then, oh, don't shake your head. Yes. I mean, I told you last time. Yeah, I, I know. And I brought out the Dybbuk box mm. and do you think it's that no no what what do you what what vibe do you get I feel a good vibe okay. like I feel like there's something here but it's not anything scary that's that's kind of what I've always thought too because even with like the things that had happened when I was younger nothing aside from the door slamming but really a door slamming doesn't have to represent negativity could just be like hey i'm here i get like sweet old woman vibes i don't know what it would be because like we're the only people to live in this house dude you never know you know i've thought about the whole like someone being attached like you know because like Mm -hmm. you know that's a theory that people get attached like something can attach to someone yeah i've I've thought that maybe something was attached to me at some point because like of all the dumb shit that I've done prior to, <laughs> prior to realizing it, you know, because I used to be the, you know, I take the ghost ventures approach where I would, you know, talk shit and say use my body and do all that yeah. type of shit, but I've never had anything super negative. I can't with them. <laughs> Brutal murder that happened at my house, and I can call our house ghost granny. She gets mad when I use dry measuring cups for my wet ingredients. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! <laughs> <laughs> you need to have them on your podcast. You guys would have a great time. Oh, hundred percent. You're all. Yeah. Everyone's always welcome. So if you are interested in coming on, please reach out either through her or you can find me on social media. Whatever works. I'd be yep. down to set something up. You said you had some surprises for me. Okay, first I want to dive into the scary stories I have. Okay, please. So I was talking to oh. my stepdad. He says, no, for real, her son killed through the next. What? The house you live in now? What the fuck? I'm literally going over there tomorrow. Oh, have fun. Can I investigate your house tomorrow? Anyway. That's sketchy. I love that for you. Axe murder. Um, so I was talking with my stepdad, and he's very, like, he's the most honest, like, chill guy I've ever met in my mm. life. Like, he, his favorite pastime hobby is hunting for rocks oh i love it just a, just a a sweet genuine, soul he's a beekeeper you know like oh does he want to come do this podcast it took a lot for me to get him to talk about this stuff because ah. it like traumatized him so much but i would talk about bees i love bees <laughs> oh we'll talk about bees beekeeper all day. episode he has a chicken farm like he's an interesting guy um okay Ooh, that monster is spicy i love spicy stuff no, I don't know why I just said that. Dun, dun, I, dun. I hate spicy stuff. Okay, 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 okay. I'm trying to figure out where to start here. Um, we'll start with my stepdad. So, shut up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most random reference, and I fucking love it. If you have both of us on, you'll never get a word on. And that's like, like 2018, Nikki. Anyway, just shut up for a minute, okay? <laughs> okay. So he, so I told you the the Skinwalker Ranch story about his niece, right? Yeah. Okay. Um. So his grandpa, through his past wife's side. 
Um, he used to go, it was out past Tooele. It was called Mount Panaka. Okay. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I've never heard of it. Mm-hmm. Middle of nowhere, but um, they used to, so it was, it was actually his great grandpa who recently just passed away, which was sad, but mm-hmm. he used to go with his dad and they would carry a wagon and they would sell their produce. Okay. And so they would go up on top of the mountain where they had like some fields and stuff. And so he went with his dad and they had like a big wagon. They were up there putting stuff in and then they were about to come back down the hill. And then there was just a guy all of a sudden, like just like this big tall guy and he's just kind of creepy. And he, he looked at them and he's like, if you bury here, you'll be rich. And they're like, you don't want crack? Like, what? Right. Okay, and so they're like, okay. And then they look back and he's gone. And they're like, that was weird, right? And so they go back down the hill and they get back to their house. And the mom was there. And she's like, a guy, when you're gone, a guy came here. And he was, like, really creepy. And he said, if you, like, bury up in the mountain, they will get rich. And it was the same guy. And this all happened within five minutes of each other and there's no way he could have beat them down right hmm and so they it's been in the family that they they have like it's like in will and stuff that if anyone finds treasure up there like who it goes to in the family and stuff and so they still will spend time up there and go dig looking for treasure mm-hmm. what the fuck yeah that his whole side of the family like Whenever they get together, we sit around the fire and they tell all kinds of stories. It's amazing. So that's one story he told me. So, okay, did did he give details of what this guy looked like? Not really. He said he was just tall, just lanky and creepy. Hmm. That's all he said. He's like, or if you dig here. If you dig here. You'll be rich. Weird. It's not like, you know, like rich in soil or anything. Because it was like basically like a desert. Right. But like... Like hinting towards like yeah. some sort of. That's so, a, yeah, that's a it's weird been one. Passed down in the whole like it, they take it very seriously. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, another one. That's weird. One. So, he lived out by Tooele, and he used to work at a magnesium plant when he was younger. And he, he was outside, and all of a sudden it was like really sunny outside, and all of a sudden it got like a shadow above him. And so he looked, and he said, huge black triangle, like, huge, just moving, like, so slow above him, silently. He, and he doesn't lie about it. Like, he... Right. And it was going so slow, and then it passed the stacks where, like, the smoke was coming out from the factory. And he said, because of magnesium, if it was, like, a plane or anything, it would have destroyed it. Right. Magnesium and it just went right through. And it just went right through, and then it just disappeared. He said it was there for probably 10 seconds, just floating. You know, it's super creepy because, you know, my, my, in all honesty, like talking about ghosts and, you know, demons and paranormal is a lot of fun. But my main focus and like, I guess, I guess fascination is UFOs and aliens. Cause yeah. my, oh, I totally believe in this stuff. My, my most prominent thing that has ever happened to me was seeing ufos in the sky with my father Mm -hmm. and still to this day it changed us both him and i that day yeah i I mean i've never really seen anything but i totally believe in it and and, you know if we're going down the theory of what ufos might be in my eyes i look at what human tech looks like right now and what we're doing right like Mm -hmm. War here, and this is going to be a weird tangent, but war is probably going to be fought with unmanned equipment. Yeah. Right? How do we travel through deep space right now? Mm -hmm. Unmanned equipment. Is it far-fetched to think, if you believe in other life, that they have the ability to send unmanned equipment here? I don't think that's far-fetched. And if if they are sending unmanned equipment, what would they investigate? All the things that would make sense to investigate. Yeah. You know, magnesium plants. If it's producing magnesium to them, that's some sort of material maybe they don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. But they could go and suck some up with some sort of 
long distance drone bring it back and test it yeah and i talk to people and they're like i think you know they think of aliens and they're creepy and weird looking and i'm like i don't think that at all no why would they have to be creepy and, and they're not looking? creepy like i genuinely think they're there's just stuff out there that we don't yeah. know about you know you know and if if you ask me this question like if we found let's say we find a hundred percent proof of life on another planet mm -hmm. there is no way unless someone has some big balls no pun intended would the first mission be a manned craft yeah you would send probes to investigate first. yeah for sure so why i when i think ufos and like you know the pill-shaped ufo that came out like it moved in all sorts of weird ways we have drones that move in those weird ways too mm -hmm. we don't have man craft that moves in those ways yeah so why is it why can't it just be a drone it's true that's what i think weird personally stuff. you could choose to be abducted would you do it for the experience <sighs> yeah would people believe me I and, would. I think I would for sure, actually. And would it harm me? Yeah, like, if it didn't harm me, then yes. But if it would know, harm me, I don't think I would. Like coming back changed. I got like, I guess I'm moving to the mountains yeah. and starting my AM radio like, station. Like, I already believe it, but like, if I were to be hurt, then no, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, Utah has a lot of alien activity. Yeah. So. Sorry to go on that tangent. Yeah. You go on. Oh, well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um... His, this isn't this isn't just ghost stuff. He's got all kinds of stuff. So, one time he was driving home from Tooele, from here to Bountiful, and he pulled off the side road because he had to pee. And he just pees off the side road. And off, he doesn't yeah. go to the bathroom like a, he's a weirdo. So he like steps over the guardrail and starts peeing, and he looks down, and there is KKK members like, oh, all in their hood, and he just starts peeing, and he's like, and they all like <laughs> turn and look at him, and he's like. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he just like, got back in his car and just drove away. He's like, I just I stepped over the wrong fence to pee. And I was like, yeah, yeah. So. Damn, what the fuck? I got another cool story from him. So <laughs> he was doing what he does best, rock hunting, right? I love it. Middle of nowhere on a mountain. And this story freaks me out. So he was like, on the side of the mountain, it was getting kind of dark. It was like 6 o'clock, so the sun was kind of setting. Um, and then he saw like a fire in the distance, and so he's like, he's like what is that? And so he like, it's like, the sun's going down really fast at this point, and so he gets his binoculars out, and he's just watching, and there's probably a hundred people all in black cloaks um, with a giant fire, and they're holding hands like this, and they're chanting, and there's like a naked lady in the middle. Oh. And so they're just going like this and he's like he's like just watching for a second. He's like, I should probably get out of here. And then the guy it was one guy chanting, like leading it, and then he just stops and turns and looks at Ed, my stepdad, and he thinks that his binoculars like reflected the fire. Oh, so they could see something. Yeah, and then he's like, he looked like right like he was looking right in my eyes. And then he yelled, it stopped, and then they all moved towards him. And so he got in his truck and, like, he ran and pulled out his gun by him. And, like, they were chasing him down. And, oh, like, my God. And he, he just knew. He said if I, he knew that if he was to be caught, he would be killed. Like, he just knew. And so he drove it, like, as fast as he could and got to the police department. And they brought him back. And they went back up there. And they were all gone. No evidence except the grass was all flat where they were, like, standing. And, like, fire, right? They were probably no. still. Oh, no evidence of fire? No. It was just flat. What the fuck? You know, when you start talking about cults and things that are going on of that level, it's really... That's the shit that scares me the most oh, because... Cults are scary. Because we know that they exist. It's not paranormal or UFOs where, like, you know, we still have to speculate. Mm -hmm. We know there's cults that do some fucked up shit. I mean, if you want to go down rabbit holes, go look up the bohemian grove shit i mean i consider myself growing up in a cult not other people consider it that ain't <laughs> no mormon pioneer larping you're right <laughs> that's probably the best quote <laughs> that ain't no mormon pioneer you LARPing. The, you hate them on your oh my god um yeah no i mean 
to be a hundred percent honest with you, there's a cult that lives a block away from here. Yeah. They're all they're the FLDS side of things. Mm-hmm. They're the fundamentalists. They all it's polygamists, and they. All, I have polygamists that live by me over here too. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I'm sorry, but if we're not looking at that as a cult in 2021, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, it's for sure a cult. And it's always been a cult. I, I've ran into one weird experience where there was some cult. Excuse me, the monster. Scared. How dare you? Fear burps. You scared? I get those. Um. There's an aesthetic that comes with like the the darker side of things that people like, mm-hmm. right? Like there's you know the goth look, the emo look, like the dark look. Um, and the reason why I say that is on one of the investigations that I went on, we went up to one of the canyons, and mm-hmm. the the paranormal story is that there's a guy who looks like he's wearing like an eighty sweater mm-hmm. that jogs this path. But he's like an apparition. Yeah. And it, it's pretty... God, I can't remember what canyon was. I wish Forrest was here. He would know what I'd be talking about because he was there. Yeah. When we rolled up to the, the canyon park area, over in like the park itself, kind of like, I don't know what they're called, where like the benches are for like, food, like mm-hmm. people throwing parties, there was probably maybe a dozen, maybe 20 people all wearing black and red doing something. We don't know what. And mm. we, like, went over there, and, like, they kind of just talked to us. Like, oh, wait, no, we didn't go over there. Did, did we go to that one? I don't think they – I think we were I too scared to go over there. there. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember exactly what happened because I think we were – Um, I don't know. Anyways, there, there was probably about 20 people in black and red. Just – it looked like they were just hanging out, mm-hmm. but, like – Oddly, they were all wearing the same shit. Yeah. Like, it wasn't, like, variations. It was all they the same They were probably clothing. just on the same bowling team. <laughs> there like, you go, yeah. Relax. Hanging out. <laughs> the the thing, it was, like, one or two in the morning. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. At least 80 Jacket guy got Steve's true. True. He got the drip. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cults and, like... See, I'm less scared of dead people. Like, I'd rather walk into a haunted place than... Like creepy people doing chants. Like, yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, 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 no. Oh, the most scary thing in my eyes is 100% just humans. Oh, I hate They scare humans. the shit out of me. <laughs> I hate people. They're terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> humans are 100% the reason why all bad things happen. It's true. It's, it's, like... it's true. <laughs> it's so true. Um, so I like to go investigate these things. Like, how do you, like I do a true crime show, mm-hmm. and every week I get like more and more. I stray further and further away from liking humans. Yeah. So I'm just like, no, I agree. Oh, I totally agree. I don't like people. <laughs> yeah, this week we're doing Son of Sam, and I'm just... Ooh, that's a I, good one. I'm sitting here, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, people just are so awful. People are awful. I like... I watch the true crime because it's just so fascinating wow. how their mind works to me. It just... People are nasty and weird. Because you just, like, you can't put yourself in the shoes of it being a reality, mm-hmm. but it 100% existed. Yeah. You just you can't know? even fathom... Like, Gacy and Kemper, they didn't live that long ago. No. Kemper's still alive, I yeah. believe. Mm, I don't think he is. Is he? I thought Ed Kemper was still alive. I thought he was old as shit. Yeah, I don't know how people don't have no remorse. I, I've always had this theory. I mean, it's proved most of the time. I think that majority of serial killers are sociopaths. Yeah. And, like, they know what's right and wrong, but they, they literally don't have... The capacity to care yeah because i feel like you have to have something mentally blocking you from feeling empathy because i feel like that would be impossible to kill someone you know right. like i just think they're all sociopaths fun fact one in four people are sociopaths yeah i uh just terrifying so another show that i do is called dax cast mm-hmm. and it's with an individual he's, he's a friend of mine um, his name is Dax Wilson, and he uh, he has ASTP, antisocial personality disorder, ASPD, and oh. uh, he he doesn't have any empathy. He doesn't have he doesn't feel embarrassment. A couple other things. Oh, like zero empathy. Like that's interesting. And you know he that's 
it's fascinating doing a podcast with him because when we talk about things, he'll throw situations at me that don't make sense to him. Like yeah. why people feel that way. And like the whole, like one of the main goals of the show, like down the road, like we talk a lot of like conspiracy and do like, like next week we're doing missing 411. Mm. And uh, one of the big goals of the show is to try and like bring, like shed a little light on the, stereotypes around it because he's very high functioning he's a that's private crazy. investigator I've never, i don't think i've ever he's a friend what that's dope he's a pi oh i'd love to meet him um that's cool. and that's he so just cool. but like when you watch the show when you talk to him he has very unique opinions on shit mm-hmm. and he just he doesn't understand empathy at all yeah. you know and he talks about how when you look up people with his disorder, like you immediately get linked to like Dahmer and Bundy and yeah. like yeah, all I these murderers. About, yeah, that's and crazy. He's like, it sucks because when people hear that I have it, they immediately think like I'm trying to, like I'm going to use like their emotions against them or I'm going to try and manipulate them into mm-hmm. doing things. Like I really don't, like I really don't do that. He's like, there's been points in time where I can. And he's like, I won't lie, I'm really good at it. Yeah. Because I just. Just how my brain works. Mm-hmm. He's like, I don't. He's like, I've never once thought about murdering people. Yeah. He's like, it just doesn't make sense to me. He's like, but I could understand how if people don't get it treated, and don't get the necessary work, how easy it would be to slip down that path. Oh yeah, yeah. And hearing that, like, you're like, yeah, like Damn. I've I've watched people on YouTube that are sociopaths and yeah. talk about it, and it's it's weird, like. You, you think once you hear someone with a sociopath, like instantly they're crazy and do horrible things, but like I love yeah, I love conversing weird. with him because I don't know if it has anything to do like because he told me like when he's done brain scans, his brain looks way different than most people's. Oh really? Like his frontal lobe like almost hangs further down. Oh, it's r- really fascinating. But I love conversing with him because he has such a different outlook on life yeah and yeah that would be fascinating you know and people always ask him like well because he's dating someone and like he's a people like give him shit like well how can you date someone you can't I feel love was literally just curious about that and like, he's like no i he's like i i know what love is i i i love my girlfriend yeah you know yeah but the world thinks like you shouldn't like yeah if you're a sociopath you don't have those things yeah wow no it's very fascinating That's interesting it's it's one of those things where like i you know i've talked to him i'm like are you worried that things could get worse and he's like if the brain stops developing when you're 26 i only got like a year and a half more so hopefully mm-hmm. not yeah but it's it's like that thing when people like do bad things and it's like they're like oh well then you had a hard life at home and it's like yeah people have hard lives at home but they don't do horrible things when they grow up. I think it's probably the same thing with like sociopaths or yeah. stuff like that. It's like, there's a really it pop- can add to it, but that's no excuse. And there's you know, there's a really popular comedian who I don't personally, I haven't followed him much, but um, Holly and I think Cass know him. Um, Shane Smith. I don't, know. I, I don't know how they know him. I don't know the different things, but I believe. I mean, I don't want to misquote anything, but. I believe him or his brother or someone in that world is uh, diagnosed as a psychopath. Oh. And to have like hearing the hearing him talk about it and different things like that is very fascinating too. Because yeah. like you know, early in like the eighties and nineties, if you were diagnosed as that, you're pretty much like your your life was pretty much over. Oh yeah. You know, if you're a psychopath, like you got you got pretty much put yeah. into a home. Yeah. And uh, hearing him discuss that disorder with the world has been fast that, that would be really interesting and to listen to and he's fucking hilarious really yeah Shane's been hilarious. To listen to him. i don't know like 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 bean dot jpeg says um the human brain is disturbing everyone just needs it therapy. Is. yeah therapy is fantastic i just started therapy congratulations thank you i'm, it's I'm going well i'm a very uh I'm a very big, uh, what's the word, proponent? I don't know. Advocate? Advocate? Yeah, I'm a very big advocate of therapy, Um, especially as a man. I think that men need to stop pretending that, 
we don't all need help sometimes. Yeah. You know, I tell people personally, if I didn't go to therapy, I don't know if I'd still be here. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I, I if if people want to say that it's weak to go to therapy, those men have deeper rooted issues than the people who yeah. want to go to therapy. The stigma around mental health with men is so toxic, and it just it needs to be more talked about for sure. Yeah, it's very fascinating. I think it, I think our generation, the younger generation, are doing a very good job at, mm-hmm. of trying to fix that. Mm-hmm. But there's still definitely a lot of issues with yeah. the older generation thinking it's like a a status for weakness mm-hmm. or a status for like you're not a real man or yeah. whatever that is. Like, I try to be like as open as I possibly can with yeah. like mental illness and whatever because like it's not something to be ashamed of. No. You know? I mean even to the – even like humans are – sometimes born with chemical imbalances in their brain that we just can't control Me. you know like yeah. why why are we like if there's help for that why are we not going for it you know it like, makes, it's like it's literally like if you're physically sick and you can yeah. get medicine you know yeah god bless yeah i more people will support you than you'll ever know that that's the thing too is like talking about the more that you talk about whatever it is you need help with the more people you find who are either dealing with similar things or have dealt with similar things or who maybe just have the advice you need to hear and like sometimes all it takes is the one person to say something that really just clicks yeah and it makes sense and you're like i needed to hear that yeah you know that's what happened to me i went to a therapist and you know after i can't remember how many sessions i went to but it just just clicked and i'm like like changes your perspective like completely yeah, yeah i agree yeah and if i i i would even be more if i was more financially independent in the moment mm-hmm. i would be going to therapy once a month even though i'm in a better mind state because like just having someone that you can go talk to oh i think even the most mentally well people should go i think everybody should go to and you're therapy. seeing it like in a lot of very um quote unquote successful I know successful is uh, relative but like you know a lot of people who are seen as successful all go monthly yeah. bi-monthly at least because I look at it this way if you were to build a house right and you don't have any experience in that are you going to do it yourself or are you going to hire someone to do it Yeah. same with the brain do you know anything about your brain or how emotions actually work? Yeah. No. I'm going to hire someone who spent, it out. Yeah. <laughs> who spent eight years of their life trying to study it. They're going to be able to know what is wrong or what could potentially be wrong. Or yeah. at least help me with the things that I think I need. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I don't know. It's a good thing. Therapy's good. I've been through, like, probably six different therapists. But, like, and that's okay. Like, oh, yeah. You just totally got to find one that clicks, you know? Yeah. That's why there's a variety of them, because sometimes there's therapists that you just, you don't vibe with. That mm-hmm. doesn't make sense. They just... And they don't take it offensively. They're, like, they'll tell you, they're like, sometimes we won't just click and just let me know. And, you know, like, I won't be offended. And right. Just, that's just what happens. So. I did want to pick your brain on one thing. Where, okay. where do you sit on, and this is not anything to do with therapy. So everyone listening, <laughs> switch your minds here to a different subject. Where do you sit on fortune telling slash like people who can what's the word i'm looking for they can like i don't want to call them mind readers but like they can tell you like a message from someone who's passed away like mediums mediums thank you like in therapy i'm just kidding (laughs) (laughs) yeah no 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 there's this yeah like tarot reader tarot readers and mediums and different things along those lines I and I won't judge you because I I have an opinion of my own and I'll share. I consider myself somewhat of a medium because I've okay. had experiences where I've like woken up in the middle of the night, I've had a dream, like like an ex- like for an example, like I texted my friend that was dating someone. I was like, "Does your boyfriend have a cousin that passed away?" I was like in his twenties, like a couple years ago, and she was like, "Yeah." And I was like, um, I don't know why, but he just wants me to tell you to tell him. He's just cheering him on from the sidelines. 
And she's like, he used to come to every football game and cheer him on. Jesus. He didn't miss so, like, I feel like if I really played into it, I think it goes hand in hand with me being in tune with, like, spirits and stuff. Yeah. So mediums I totally believe in. Okay. Because I feel like some stuff you can't. I don't know. I've, I've seen crazy stuff. Tarot readings, I've, like, I don't know. I'm, like, yeah, 50-50 it, on. I sit, I, I don't have a positive opinion on tarot or astrology things. Mm-hmm. So, and I was always told if I don't have a nice opinion, probably don't say it. Um, but mediums are something that have fascinated me from yeah for a long time because even I've never been to a medium, um, so I don't have any personal experiences. But I've talked to individuals who have. Um, one specifically was a guest um, a long time ago on the podcast. Um, I will say that this guest made up a bunch of bullshit. He was definitely trying to lie his way into being cool on the podcast, yeah. which was annoying. He told stories that, like, our party stories that you hear, he like, yeah. yeah, just like bullshit. But he, I would like to believe that this story he told was pretty canon, because um, he got a little bit more serious when he told it, and it was about going to a medium after one of his brothers had uh, taken his own life. Mm-hmm. And obviously he, him and his other brother who was still alive were very distraught and uh, just kind of looking for any type of help they could get. And they landed at a medium and uh, I don't remember the specific details, but the medium was able to tell them, the two brothers, an inside joke the three of them had together and like some more positive things. And, you know, I just... I've always wondered, like, I don't know, there isn't any, I don't have anything that I'd want to reach out to, I guess, for a medium. So, I'm planning sometime soon, I want to go to a medium, Mm. because with my dad, like, there's just always been questions, like, because he committed suicide, and so there's always, like, just, just curiosity, for the most part. And so I've always wanted to go, so maybe I can go and then come back here and kind of tell you about my experience with it and just... See if maybe I think it's bullshit or yeah, because you know. like I feel like mediums um, was one of those things that got a bad rep because of television, right? Oh yeah, because like there was those shows back in like the early two thousands or nineties where it'd be like you know a big stage and this medium would come up and be like, all right, who who here has lost a um, a grandpa recently? And then someone like, oh my god, I just lost my, and you just play on typical themes yeah right but it seems like there are more stories of mediums coming to light that are that have knowledge that wouldn't make sense for them to have i follow some mediums on tiktok and it's nuts like yeah there's just stuff they know that like it's just strange and I, I'm, I'm hesitant to clump mediums into the same space that i would clump in like um chiropractor work or like hypnotherapy but if you look back at what like chiropractors and hypnotherapy and different things like that how those were looked at in like the 80s mm-hmm. 70s 80s 90s mm-hmm. even though like 2000s it was very like you know mumbo jumbo like this is bullshit type of thing and now as more evidence is coming we're starting to see that therapy can be very good for you or not therapy, like science, hypnosis, yeah. excuse me, hypnosis. Like scientifically proven, yeah. Right, and chiropractor work actually has a lot of positive benefits from it. Yoga, yoga used to be a joke, yeah. and now we're realizing that it's super healthy for you. Mm-hmm. So I just wonder if mediums is another one of those things that even as more time comes on, we're going to realize that there are people who are potentially more in tune. I definitely do believe in mediums, for sure. As far as tarot cards and uh, astrology goes. yeah. Yeah, and they got a lot of uh, proving for me. I had a medium I've never met ask about my dead family members and tell me about their distinguished feature, distinguishing features, and that they were here and wanted to say sorry. And they were terrible people. There's no way she knew. She didn't know. Crazy. Yeah. I, I think there's just some cases you can't not leave. Like, no. Like, how do they know that, you know? The distinguishing features part is what's creepy, right? Yeah. Having an inside joke between three brothers, 
how or even like i've seen like they'll say something and to be like that's what like that was just me and my dad like on his deathbed that's what we talked about like something like that yeah it's like how do they know that yeah you know you ever had any premonitions where you've dreamed or have a thought about something that maybe later had yeah for sure really because mm. yeah. i have i have a lot of dreams where but it's mostly about other people other people I've had a lot of dreams that have occurred and then later pan out, which I think is very interesting. I don't understand why that's a thing for me. My stepdad, he he can tell the future. He like he'll sit there and be like, "Are you gonna answer your phone?" And then five seconds later, your phone will ring. Like he just knows stuff. Like it's he's a he's a witch. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure there are witches that exist. But I want to be a witch. I mean. What's the one that everyone jokes about, but then people are like, wait a minute. Um, she was in the Covenant season. Oh, of, Stevie Nicks? Yeah, that lady's a witch. She's a white witch. She's the white witch. I love she, her. For sure. Yeah. She looks like she's 20. Yeah. And she's like, she in her 70s now? Close. Yeah. Yeah. No plastic surgery, her. I don't think. Mm -hmm. I love her. Yeah, she's great. Still I'm glad that they, I'm glad that uh, her band came back in the limelight. Because of TikTok? Yeah. The yeah, 420 yeah. dog face Yeah, video. that song blew up again. I was so excited. I was hearing it on the radio. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my god. I was excited the younger generation are hearing it. Because yeah. it's great music. It's yeah. Great music. I grew up on that from uh, one of my uncles. Mm -hmm. Usually being that music. And I just... It, it, lo it fell out of my repertoire of uh, music I listened to. And mm -hmm. I heard it again when that TikTok That was me. Up. Like I heard it when I was younger and I just didn't listen to it. And now that I'm older, there's a back of my... Shit slaps. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> Let's see. Bean says, I'm not a witch. I'm your wife in the rear. <laughs> At this rate, I don't want to be that anymore. The Princess Bride. Oh my God, the Princess Bride is my favorite movie. Classic. Ah, so good. Um, before we're done, I do want to play a game. Okay, let's play a game. my TikTok. Yep. Have you seen uh, the trend where it's no laughing, just sounds? I don't know. What are we going to have? What do we do? So we go back and forth. And you make a sound, trying to get the other person to laugh. Okay. And if you laugh, you lose. Done. Are we gonna record it on TikTok, or are we just gonna do it? I'll just get a clip from Twitch. <clears throat> okay. I feel like this is the problem, though. Is like the overarching thing, the overarching theme of this episode is gonna make this really difficult for me. My problem is when I know I'm not supposed to laugh. That's when I want to laugh the most. Also, I'm just really funny. Yeah. That's not fair. <laughs> what? Okay, ready? Go. You go first. <clears throat> Take that one home with you. No, you listen. Make myself laugh. <sighs> oh, I can't look at you. She stuck a whole bag of belly jeans. Belly jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I fucked up the quote. <laughs> belly jeans. You made me laugh because you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> stuck a whole bag of jelly beans in my ass. <laughs> Okay, good game. Good game. Oh. It's really hard to look because I just look right into just your eyes. I can't look at anyone. I can't do it. <laughs> I really can't. I have a I have a really good ability of being able to and I was told that I should go into acting because I can just easily just and then just be deadpan. See I'm really good, like if I if I don't have to try back to make someone laugh. I'm pretty good. Like, I'm yeah. pretty good. I went to school for acting. Oh, shit. I didn't know like, that. that's what I originally, I wanted to entertain, but like, all through high school and acting, and I went to college for acting and stuff, but. 
that is the hardest thing. I have a hard time not laughing. But, yeah. But I do pretty good. But if I have to do it back, I'm laughing at myself. Right. Or if I stumble over saying jelly yeah. beans. Belly jeans. Belly jeans. <laughs> I stuck a whole bag of belly jeans on my ass. Stuck a whole bag of belly jeans. Have you ever thought about doing stand-up? I don't. I like to sit down. Listen here, goddamn. See ya. <laughs> that's pretty fucking... That's pretty spot on. I don't on. know. I, I don't... I, the thing is, I don't think I'm that funny. But then again, I'm like, I'm the funniest person in the world, but it's sarcastic. But, like, I really don't think I could be, do stand-up, because I don't know if I could, like, sit down and, like, write a joke. Yeah. I don't know. I just remember, I haven't really tried, though. I think that's the thing, right? Like, if you want to entertain, like, yeah, I want to get that YouTube up and go, I think it's going to be so fucking good. So good. I do have an idea for my uh, first YouTube video. Yeah. And I'm going to interview my high school crushes. And I'm not going to tell them what the, the video is about. And I'm just going to like start off and be like, Kim, hey, you're with my high school crush. <laughs> <laughs> just make them like, super uncomfortable. <laughs> I just can't even imagine How, the reactions. Okay. And then I'll be like, so did you want to kiss? Or... Yeah, I was gonna say like, like some of them are married and stuff. It's gonna be so good. I was gonna say like, how like rated R do you like get with it? Oh, Cause... not that right? No, because <laughs> I was just thinking like, you just be. Like, I remember this time that you had a present in or pre, a pre, present in front. Of... <laughs> I just had a stroke. Present mind. <laughs> Don't mind me <laughs> when you had to present in front of the class and just the whole time in the back. I was like, damn, damn, damn boy. Do you remember that time you accidentally touched your hand with my hand in the hall on February 8th, 2006? <laughs> it's 1.22 p.m. 1.22 p.m. We were heading off from recess. I haven't forgot that moment since... since I then. haven't washed my hands since that day. <laughs> you just pan up and your hands just like disgusting, dude. Just sniff it. Oh my yeah. god, that would be a hilarious... And I have like, I've talked to people about, and they've said yes. And they're like, what is it about? I'm like, I can't, I can't tell you. Yeah, that's the whole joke. I that's one of my favorite things about doing a podcast. Even though I don't do it a lot because I kind of think it's fucked up, but I love bringing new people on and then just like immediately putting them on the spot with like really just like over the top questions. That's my kind of humor. Yeah, I think it's so funny because <laughs> like people just um uh between two ferns with Zach Galifianakis. Yes, see that humor is the best. <laughs> when he asks Paul Rudd, he's like. How do you hide your Jewishness so well? <laughs> was it so Brad Pitt good. with the chewing gum? Yeah, that yeah. was my favorite. Yeah, yeah. So good. All of them are so funny. Did you ever watch... Uh, this one's a little bit more like hardcore version of it, but the guy who does Borat, um, he made an H. I think it's HBO or one of the paid television channels where he was interviewing like politicians in character. No. Oh, it's so raunchy and so bad. Well, did you you saw the new Borat, right? I didn't watch it yet. Is it good? <laughs> you need okay. I need you to watch it. And then yeah, because yeah. I I watched his TV show or the t- I watched some clips from his TV show, and like it was like he had Dick Cheney on, yeah, and he was just like making all these like jokes about war, and then he tried to get Dick Cheney to sign a blown up IED from Iraq. Like, just, like, some real fuck shit. You, okay, imagine that, but, like, ten times that. It's on, on his second movie. Like. The first Borat's great. He goes, he, like, it has, the whole thing is to do with, like, politicians and Trump supporters. And it's. Have you ever watched All Gas, so No Breaks? Yes. That. Yes. Yes. That is my end goal. Oh, yeah. Of content yes. creation. Is being able to go to, like. These just conventions that are just so, yeah. Like okay, I I don't I don't like shaming people. That's not what I'm about. Yeah. But like, if I could get into like some flat Earth conventions and yeah. like shit like that, like when he went when he went to the flat Earth convention and then everyone ended up being like low key anti Semite, I was like, oh my god, yeah. This content is fucking. See, gold. I don't know. Like, I think it'd be funny, but I don't know if I could do that because I get way too upset. I think I was shown on face like you are so incredibly stupid. That's why I respect people like that that go in and they're Yeah. That guy's yeah. the goat. Yeah. 
Hilarious. I feel bad for him. Did you hear what happened? No. So All Gas No Breaks was a, uh, it was produced by a company. Mm-hmm. Like a company basically hired him, gave him his like touring van, the little shitty van that he had. Yeah. And then a budget, I guess. Well, since that show is super popular, I imagine what happened is he wanted to restructure his contract because it was bringing in a shit ton of money. Yeah. And I guess they ended up not coming to terms and kicked him off the show oh that's dumb yeah oh he was great but he's in talk i guess he has something he's in talks with tim and eric those guys <sighs> from adult swim oh that would be yeah yeah mm-hmm. but man i just I his content was so good when he went to sturgis during the covid just really shows i never saw that oh my god i need so to watch that bad. it's just when you watch it and i i don't get political that's not my thing i don't like politics yeah, I don't you watch that though, and you're like, "Man, people are as crazy as people as the media portrays." <laughs> God, you need to watch the new Borat and get back to me because you will love it. Oh, you, Bean says you can do my makeup for a video. I'll be so awkward. I'll do it. I will. You're probably the most awkward person I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll partake in any video you're trying to make. Mm-hmm. Just if you need the. The wholesome chubby guy to show up and just fucking, you know, throw a little bit of zap into it. Can you make that noise again? Zap. Okay. Um. You know? <laughs> the ultimate punch? Just a little zap. It's classic. It's kind of a wussy sound to make with the ultimate punch. Zap. Yeah. The ultimate punch never worked. Okay. Well, I mean, I, maybe I'll have you on do your makeup. I'm down. Okay. I'm not afraid of I feel like you owe me that. At this point. Yeah, true, true, true. True. Mm-hmm. Well, shall we wrap it up for the evening? We shall. Go ahead and plug your socials, your TikTok if you would like. Mm, yep. Uh, yeah. I'm on Indeed. Someone hire me, first of all. <laughs> first and most importantly, hire me. Uh, TikTok is They Call Me But. Uh, same with Instagram. That's, that's all you need to know. <laughs> Plug your social media. I'm on Indeed. I'm, I am very interactive on on in, on Indeed currently. <laughs> Finding in the DMs, pitching my new movie. Yeah, DM me. I'm pretty open. So. <laughs> Indeed, drop your LinkedIn. <laughs> uh, yeah, everyone, go go definitely go check out. Yeah, if um, you want my email, let me know. Yeah, let me know. It's... I got my resume on hand. <laughs> So. If you ask nicely, I'll just send it over. Yeah, I mean, you don't even have to ask nicely. I'll, I'll just send it over. <laughs> um, everyone watching, make sure you go check out um, go check out her uh, TikTok and Instagram and uh, LinkedIn and Indeed. And if you guys didn't watch this one, if you didn't watch the video of this one, I would definitely go uh, check it out on YouTube or whatever because my Hawaiian shirt's pretty dope. Yeah. Also, what a roller coaster of topics. Roller coaster of topics. We really dived into quite a bit of things. Colts, stress burps, uh, being, we, being unemployed. We did a good job at uh, staying on paranormal for a while, which I was happy. For a while, yeah. yeah. Um, being in chat, showing up and brightening the day. Absolutely. The goat. Blowing it out of the water. Blowing it out of the water. Classic. Well, see ya. <laughs> uh, everyone, sorry. Oh. <laughs> I threw you off, didn't I? <laughs> I wasn't ready. Well, I was about ready to see how long we could go without saying anything. Oh, I could do that all day. Then I get awkward because I'm like, "Fuck, are they in? Are you in on the joke? Do you get what I'm vibing with, or do we not?" <laughs> now that I know that about you, I'm so good. <laughs> Um, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you uh, do the normal things everyone asks. Follow, blah, 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 blah. Um, thanks again to our sponsors, Monarch Social. Oh, my heck emote works now. Heck. <laughs> heck. It's a little dog. He's heck. Um, thank you again to our sponsors, Monarch Social Brand, Dark Prime Collectibles, and Happiest Med. I appreciate you guys for uh, sponsoring the show. Um, I will be back tomorrow for True Crime Drunks, um, where we'll be covering Son of Sam. 
And then Sunday, check out Dark Prime Collectibles' first stream where we're doing Dungeons & Dragons. I am playing a rogue. Super pumped about that. I've never played D&D before. Did you name it yet? Yeah. Okay, just thought you'd let me name it first. Fuck. I dropped the ball on that. That's fine. Next one. Next character okay. you're naming. Um, and then next week we'll be back here Friday, um, 6 p.m. with um, the owners of Monarch Social, our sponsor. So that'll be a fun episode. And then cool. look forward, excuse me, look forward to Shadowlands Utah and then potentially some more paranormal whoop, content. Whoop. Whoop, whoop. Pull yeah. over. That ass is too fat, community. I appreciate it. What? Have you never heard that song? I have. I just... I don't understand. Oh, well, dank memes are dank for a reason. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye.